السلام عليكم يا ادم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ما هو از هو از يور عيد ما معي واز جريت مان واز جود ونت نيويورك نايس هاد ا جود تايم ليفت ذا كوايت كوايت ايستن سوفينيا ما كوايت I had a good Eid, man. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. What's like the biggest difference you've noticed like in the States between like obviously like Easton, which is like small city vibes, nothing crazy going on versus like when you go to like a big city like New York? I ain't gonna lie. Easton, my experience here this past Ramadan, Easton is quiet, bro. Mm-hmm. Easton is quiet. Me, I'm a city guy. Yeah. You know I like towns and cars and you know what I'm saying? Busyness. And so when I came to the city, I'm like, yo, this spot's dead, man. Like, yeah. what's going on? I'm saying the most action I get is that pizza bolis. <laughs> <laughs> crown fried chicken. Yeah, no, cr- shout out crown chicken. Shout out pizza bolis. <laughs> That's where all the action is, you know what I'm saying, in the area. But it's, it's good, man. It's nice. It's quiet. I feel like it's a town where you retire in or if you have a family, you want to take them out of the business of the town that you mm-hmm. come and move to. But me, someone that's young, that likes, that likes the energy, I'm not a big fan of small towns. But it was good, though. Yeah. People are nice. Yeah. Don't, don't get wrong. People are nice. People are cool. But just long term for me, while I'm still young, no, I, can't, I, can't, yeah. I can't stay here. No, I completely know what you mean because it's even for me like growing up in this like area environment. Like I've yeah. always enjoyed it because it's home, right? You yeah, grow up yeah, here, yeah, you're yeah. chilling. But then when you travel around the world, you see different cities, different vibes. Like even when I go back to Egypt or mm. when I travel then around in Europe and stuff, I always see things like, huh, well, like this is like their day-to-day life. Like metro it's busy it's moving yeah, barcelona yeah, yeah. had people going in and mm. out like you go 6 a.m you're in the metro some people could be coming back from the club and some people yeah, are going yeah. to work mm-hmm. and you're like this is so weird i was in new york man and and i was at the fridge we prepared the masjid mm-hmm. so i was doing laundry and stuff so i want to buy a drink so i went to a local deli mm-hmm. bro it was booming 6 a.m in the morning <laughs> guys outside chilling like rolling <laughs> dice and like <laughs> bro it's after fridge, what's going on Got my drink. People are inside. You know what I'm saying? Guys eating chopped cheese, bacon, egg, and cheese. Everyone's yeah. eating. Th- halal, okay. Halal. Yeah. Bacon, egg, and <laughs> <laughs> clarify. Halal. But uh, everyone's doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? So it was nice to kind of have the switch back to the to the mm-hmm. city, man. Me, I love that, bro. The business, yeah. the hustle and bustle. Because I was in Kenya before I came here. You know what I'm saying? And Kenya's and, like that, like heavy? Oh, man. Busy, bro. Like most areas, like you... Of course, each city, you can find the like, quiet areas. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I live where I live mostly. It's a more of a middle class, high class area. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. So it's it's kind of busy, but it's not busy enough where it's it's annoying or like it's, it's like uh, hectic, hectic, yeah, yeah. Or, or bothering to you. But when you go to some areas like the town, or you want to go shopping, or the the kind of the more cheaper areas, mm-hmm. it's busy, bro. Like everyone's like out. Tra- every, bro, traffic. People are walking on roads. No stop signs. No mm-hmm. street lights. You're just on vibes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I like that walking through crowds. Have you have you ever played the game called the? Um, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, 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 I love that game. You, 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 you know when the guy's in the town, and then you press circle, and then he moves the guy's shoulders, and you're walking. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like this. <laughs> He's moving in the heart. The, yeah, the, the, the group of the exactly. girls that take you, so you're like yeah. hitting. Yeah, so you're hitting them. It's exactly what it is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's got to dodge people. So I'm used to that. I like that stuff, you know? But the, but the quiet town is not that bad. Bro. It's nice after a while. Like, yeah. relax, settle, just calm vibes, you know? It's nice, but... It was good to have the city after a whole month yeah. of just being in a, in, a, in a quiet town. And it's especially too, like for me, something I've noticed that when I do go to cities and stuff with my personality, like being yeah. an extrovert and high yeah, energy, yeah. when I do go into a city, I will I will say like I noticed like the energy like gives me more energy. Yeah, yeah. And like I like it, but then I think for me sometimes it also causes me to like think almost too much or like because mm. the sensory, there's so much sensory things. Mm. So I already think a lot and already like always kind of mm. feel like I'm always. Uh, yeah, I know you, but you think move, a lot. You think I'm a always lot. moving in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like on the outside, I can look calm, but like yeah. in my head, I'm like, I feel like I'm like tweaking this. I'm, like, I'm thinking a lot, but then when I'm there, it's then exterior and interior as well. Yeah. Because the outside's all hectic and my inside's a little hectic too. Mm-hmm. So then when I come to an area that's a little more calm or reserved, it allows me to like collect my thoughts, mm. like and actually go from like one point to one point mm. to next point. But when I notice that I'm like out in the cities and yeah. which I love, right? Yeah. But when I'm there, wallahi, I feel like you know, I could be all over the place yeah. physically, real world. Like I'm, I gotta stay on like att- attention. I'm looking here, looking here. Mm. Looking, there's so many things to pay attention to. Yeah, but that's why guys have like retreats after like three month work. They go on like a like, two day mm-hmm. just to kind of like go back and you know. How, what, what, what's the word from looking for? Um, like recoup, recuperate. Yeah, yeah recuperate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, there's a, there's a, there's a different word. There's a better it. word. You know like recharge. You, recharge. Yeah, 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 recharge. yeah, yeah. No, the English is not working right now. <laughs> recharge. Yeah, go back and recharge and stuff. So yeah, so that's why people go on retreats. But me personally, when when it came to New York, it's funny. New York is mad aggressive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes they're kindly aggressive. Like, like they're aggressive. Like they're trying to be kind, 
because they're aggressive. Yeah. Like, I was at some spot, me and a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. It's called the Edge. I don't know if you've been to it. Mm-mm. It's the one I was showing you. Like it's basically where you go to a high building in Manhattan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see like the skyline of Manhattan and everything. Mm-hmm. So as we're leaving, as we're leaving, I'm, I'm going downstairs, whatever. And then the guy says, "Thank you. Have a good day." And he's screaming. I look at the guy's like, yo, that's very, like, that's very, that's kindly aggressive. He's like, you know, have a good day. Yeah, he's like, make sure you know you have a good day. Yeah. All right, thanks, Ak. Uh, inshallah, I'll have a good day, inshallah, definitely. But was, they're mad, like, like, a, they're mad, like, uh, like, in your face. Like, they're intense. They're intense, yeah. Yeah. But I like that, though. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying? I kind of like that kind of energy. It's nice. But there's, like, in the beginning, it was like, whoa. Because here, the yeah, last month. I was so used to, like, last month, was all quiet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when, when I got there, I was like, I had to kind of. You know what I'm saying? Get used to it again. Like, re up yourself to that level of yeah, like energy that people energy, are at. Exactly, 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 exactly. Because I want to, bro, it's so busy. I went to a spot in, in Manhattan. It's called the. Uh, it's called Kahwa House. Yeah, House. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a bunch. And there's like two in New York, I think. They're trying yeah. to build one in Philly right now. Like, yeah, I went to one in Manhattan. So when, when I went there, bro, I was shocked. It was booming. Like, hella out of, hella bro, people just yeah, out yeah. and about talking. You know, I was mad. I was mad actually at that spot. Why? On the wall. I told the guy this on the wall. They had the, uh, they had the like the flags or pictures of different countries, like a map. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And they had Yemen, Ethiopia, African countries, and Somalia was there in the corner, and it was blank. You know what I'm saying? But not didn't have like the insignia. Insignia like like like, like, like the word on top of it. Yeah, like I feel like doesn't Somalia have like a thing in the middle or no? Or Somalia's just a light light blue. No, blue. not the flag. Not the flag. Talk about the name of the country. Oh. So on the map, each country had the name on top of it. Okay, okay. So Yemen is there, Ethiopia is there, Kenya is there, and then Somalia is in the corner and it's blank. I thought the guy, bro, what's going on? Why is Somalia blank? Because Somalia and Yemen are they're close. I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. so I'm like, yeah, why is Somalia blank? I said, yo, I'll grab a pen right now, write it down on the, on the wall myself, make sure it's written down. But was it in pen or was it like 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 a uh, like a piece that was? It was it? it was a piece that's on on the country on name, the flag yeah. on the flag. So it was the map. It wasn't every country in the world though. Yeah. It was just some African countries, yeah, yeah like some, some Middle Eastern country, countries. Yeah, countries. A few of them. But I was like, you already did Kenya on top and Ethiopia is around it. So why don't you add Somalia in the corner? <laughs> why don't you just complete the corner, the Horn of Africa, you know? Yeah. But it was, well, the food there was good though. Mm-hmm. They, they had some nice Yemeni tea, the Adani tea. Yeah. They had the, the honeycomb snack. You know the honeycomb one? Yeah. The honeycomb, bang, and the honeycomb. I went one time to, but obviously for me, like I'm not like a big tea heavy drinker in the sense of like mm. to go out and do it. I'd rather have my own. Ooh, but tea like, is a must. Tea? Like, so, like I enjoy it, but like for mm. me, it's like to go out, especially to spend nine, ten bucks sometimes for me is like not worth it when I can go home and make the same exact tea that I like making. True. That's, That's true. I'm, f- I'm a very like, I like spending money and stuff yeah, and like yeah. going out and experiencing things with yeah, friends. Yeah. But if it's like I'm by my Myself, yeah. I don't go out of my way to do those types of things. Mm. I realize. By the way, I make good tea. By the way, you be, you be, you be tea no, it up. I make very good tea. I'm telling you, like, first of all, I don't, I don't use, I, I don't like tea bags. Yeah, yeah use loose leaf. My ones. dad uses like he has like thing called Arusa, Shay Arusa, which mm. is like a. It comes in this yellow and red like thing, but it's like this. But I swear, it's just tea packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stuff. Tell right? me, bro. You, you have... take some, puts it to the bottom. That's a stoop, and then like. When you're drinking, you're not going to drink the little pieces at the bottom, but they just sit there. Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. you get to the end, like you can sort of end up drinking yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, pieces, yeah. but like obviously, like you're going to be yeah. sipping it for that. Do you ever, piece. Cause it's, it's, it's not weird, but do you ever drink the tea and then you know what's the end? So you want to drink a bit more of it? <laughs> so does so it drop to the end and then it's, it's all mixed together? <laughs> and you're like trying to like do that thing where like you're, you're yeah. bouncing. <laughs> drink the tea up, you know what I'm saying? I did that a lot, but for tea, bro, I make a tea. I used to have the, my parents, when they'll go to Kenya and buy the Kenyan tea, mm-hmm. so I'll get the Kenyan tea. Saying so the nice milk, you have the cardamom, mm-hmm. you have the, the oh, like the all the clo- spices the clo- and the, the different cloves, the cinnamon, bro. You 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 put it on the pot and then you let it rise until it's about to spill. And then you bring it out. They do that. With, they do that with espresso as well. Like yeah. Italians will do that with espresso. They'll have it like almost like well, what's it right about? Yeah, 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 yeah. right at that moment. So I do. Yeah, exactly. Out. Then you have that brown golden color. Mm-hmm. You sift everything out. I'm telling you, bro. Me, I make good tea, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a big tea guy though. Yeah. After a meal. Have to have tea at shai, shai. I think it's cultural though. Culture it is, is like that. Culture. Bro, all Middle Eastern yeah, and African cultural. cultures, a lot of them. Yeah. So even, even Asian cultures. Well, I. Like Chi- Asian, Chinese, like Mandarin, like, like all the people in China, Taiwan. Yeah. Like I met a couple, a friend from Taiwan who'd always have tea after a meal too. Okay, that, he said it's know. like it's like a vibe. It's like a calming mm. thing. You know, it's like to us, like and also in a lot of those countries, like um, especially the Middle East, like drinking isn't like a big thing, like alcohol. Yeah, right. Haram, so haram, haram, yeah. yeah. So instead, usually people have a, a beer with their meal or a glass of wine mm, after dinner. Mm. To us, our glass of wine or beer after dinner is tea. Tea, yeah. Us is tea, man. Nice, good tea. And know? I know, like even Turkish people, it's like Turkish coffee. It's like they'll have coffee yeah. after their meal at night. But some coffee, like some of them are different because you have some that are like a normal coffee with the cup. 
Some are those small little ones. That's like the Turkish coffee. Bro, those ones keep me up at night. Like, I, mean, I can sleep <laughs> with coffee. But them little Saudi ones, the Saudi <laughs> ones, saying, like, and the little <laughs> Turkish ones, the small cups, with <laughs> dark green. What that was the Saudi bro? They got me. Because coffee, espressos, or the normal coffee, I can still sleep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't keep me up too much. So one day I was in Saudi, and then just giving out the little kahwas and small cups. Yeah. I'm like, yo, this is coffee, man. I can, I can, I can firm this one. So when I drank it, bro. I felt it in my veins. Like you felt your your bro, blood starts running, right? Running, bro. And I couldn't sleep that night. And I tried it. I was in my bed. I'm like, you know what? Uh, left, right, moving back, forth, nothing. Just Pilgrim restless. Pilgrim Quran. I went through like three surahs yeah. on my phone. Just, just trying to like calm, calm down yeah. and relax. Nothing was working, bro. So I just got up. I was chilling that, that whole night. But those <laughs> small ones, those ones get me, bro. They get me. Yeah. Allah, Allah, they're deep. Sometimes like I don't mind caffeine too much, but sometimes when I drink caffeine, I'll get tired like right mm. after like, you know, it's like a comforting taste. I think that's supposed to happen, though. Like, it gives you a high, and then and boom. I, but sometimes, wallahi, like, and I almost don't like this feeling, is when, like, I feel like my head's buzzing, my heart's racing a little bit. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I feel like I'm shaking. I'm like, mm. and it feels like a pre-workout or something. Like, and I don't like that I'm feeling. Bad. I never had pre-workout, but what, what, what it guy feels told like me, that every time you, told me pre-workout kills starts you. tingling. You're, you're seeing, your fingers start tingling and stuff. Mm. It like I, ha- I used to do it like for like sports sometimes here and there because like for team lift. I'm like, oh, let's take a mm. pre-workout. And we'll go and then like, and it w- listen, it would get me right. Like you would feel like really energized, but then I'm like, yo, this doesn't. It's definitely not good for yeah, your body. Yeah. Like, it's true, true. right? There's no way, right? Like you're yeah. thinking like, yo, this don't look like if it was made in a lab. Like I'd rather just drink like a coffee before or something like that. It's more yeah. natural than like yeah. putting these random chemicals in my body that they claim are mm-hmm. this, this, this. But it's like. Who knows mm. what's in that? You know what I mean? Unless it's natural. Like, yeah. there's some things like, oh, use a green tea thing. Okay. Like, green tea is different than these random chemical names and that you've mm-hmm. never read before, can't even read. Mm-hmm. I want so. to ask you, man. How was, your, how was your overall Ramadan experience? It was interesting, actually, I would say. Because for me, I don't know. My Ramadan experience was more like, I guess when you get older in Ramadan is different than when, like, you're 16, 17. Mm-hmm. When, like, it's kind of just the grind of the fast versus... When you're 23, 24, 25, 26, where you're now entering this like, okay, this is like a spiritual journey more than it is like the physical part. Because the physical part's easy. easy. Yeah. Like no food, no water all day is not a hard, yeah. difficult thing. But it's a spiritual part where it's like maintaining the reading, reading the whole Quran in the Ramadan. Like, you know, just a day. Mm-hmm. It's broken down perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. Just a day. Mm-hmm. And doing these things. But then once you do a couple of Ramadans in a row, you always want to do better than you did last year. Better than you did last year. Yep, yep. So when you get to the point where it's like, okay, I can't do much better from this year to this year in this regard okay so but then when you do worse in one regard you feel so guilty after yeah. I, I don't know it's me like mm. i felt like in some things i didn't do as well as i did in like two three previous ramadans mm. and i'm saying like dang i failed like i fa- like i think mm. like i failed the whole thing but then i'm like okay but i did i didn't lose like the main site stuff each thing but i felt like oh like i went to the same amount of tarawih, so I went to tarawih every day okay or i did this i did this okay that's nice but then it's like but i did this thing that i didn't like that i did but Last two Ramadans, I didn't do this one thing. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, okay, did I just fail? And yeah, then you get this like overthinking experience. Mm-hmm. But regardless, then like it's a different trial or different test yeah. that you go through where it's like deen and iman and like your khushu or everything isn't going to be just perfect every day. Exactly. You're going to have to dip so you can appreciate yeah. the rise mm-hmm. to even as a Muslim. Even as a Muslim, you, you, can, you can never do everything you know yeah. there's always more you can do sometimes when you finish Ramadan like man I could have read more Quran I could have gave more charity I could have prayed more salahs I could have did more du'as so I, I know you because I had the same feeling like I, I, Alhamdulillah I tried my best but there's always things like I could do that was more man like mm-hmm. I could have read another just that night or I could have just like prayed more like I had the energy to do so and mm-hmm. also it's always good that we kind of uh, ponder of what on what we did try to do better the next Ramadan you know yeah. what I'm saying but I want to ask you though how do you feel now compared to how you felt in Ramadan? Just in yourself, like the feeling you have right now compared to how you're feeling in the Ramadan. The weird thing is, is during Ramadan, I felt good mm. and like, and it was nice. But Alhamdulillah, like, I think like right after Ramadan ended, like a couple of days and, and now like I'm still consistent with like the same things I was doing Mashallah, then Mashallah, because Mashallah. I still Alhamdulillah do the same things before Ramadan. Like, I've, like I said, like once you've actually like built the habit. Yeah, you take Dean seriously. Like, mm-hmm. you know, again, like I was 16, 17 before. It's like I wasn't taking it as serious as it is now. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking like, oh, OK, I pray my five prayers. That's all I yeah. need to do. I'm good. Mm-hmm. God love me. Yeah, like, that's yeah, you know, that's you think when you're young. You're not mm-hmm. going to think of like the, the level of the person you need to become. Mm-hmm. It's like genuinely be like a practicing person of the faith. Mm-hmm. But now that like Alhamdulillah I've gotten closer and closer to Deen and like really focused on like mm-hmm. how to be the best version of myself, I've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, these are things that are now habitual. I've built these tiny habits over the course of maybe the last four or five years. Alhamdulillah, okay, cool. So 
Now what? You know, it's like yeah. there's like nothing else you can do more. Like, yeah. for example, if you read Quran every day, it's like you can always say there's more Quran I can do. But if you are reading Quran at any level, that's still a good thing. Or if you're doing athkar, you're doing your daily athkar every day. You have a list. There's your list. It takes you 20 minutes. That's it. You did your mm-hmm. 20 your 20 minutes of daily athkar. Mm-hmm. Now you can always say, oh, I can do 100 minutes, 500 minutes. Like, mm-hmm. but obviously, the rest of your day needs to be filled with work or this or this, mm-hmm. where you can't do everything. Yeah. So alhamdulillah, because I feel like it's there. Like now that I'm out of Ramadan, not I feel like the spiritual part didn't go away. Like mm-hmm. I still feel it, mm-hmm. but it almost makes me feel like. So I don't know. Maybe it's a sense of like inner like pride or inner feeling where it's like, Alhamdulillah, I'm able to do this even out of Ramadan. Because obviously, some people will only do it during Ramadan, and then the next eleven months, yeah, they'll stop. They'll stop and then stop. So I'm happy I've kept these habits over the last couple years of my life. So I'm a lucky from one. Inshallah, inshallah. And it was even the one speech you had in one of the uh, tarawih khutbas you yeah, would do, where you were yeah. like. You could uh, think you're a good Muslim now, but you could, you could die a kafir. Like you never know. Like exactly, so it's you like never know. Stay true to the th- like stay true to your faith no matter what, and like keep building those habits. Exactly, and the best thing to to to, uh, to have is habits that are consistent. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in hadith that the best deeds to Allah, the best deeds to Allah subhanahu wa taala are the ones that that are consistent, even if they're little. Mm-hmm. You know, because what's the point is that you're doing it constantly, mm-hmm. right? Instead of imagine like after Ramadan, you say, you know what, I'm going to pray tarawih. At home One day you pray 11 Two days you pray 11 Four days you pray 11 and Then for a month You don't pray any mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying So it's better Because you, you burnt out You burnt out So mm-hmm. it would be better If you prayed Every night I'm just going to pray three By two And then winter mm-hmm. right? Or just one I'm just going to pray my winter Every night mm-hmm. I went, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wake up in the morning Or sorry at, uh, Before Fajr Pray winter Every night winter One raka'ah And then maybe after five Six months You know I'm going to pray three Two And then winter Because you built that habit Exactly We pray 11 Because some people can't do 11 every single night. It's tough work and stuff. So like, to doing, doing or a laziness lot. laziness. Nece- yeah, so doing a lot. Not necessarily the best, but being consistent with what you're doing is a lot better. Because mm-hmm. it will run over time. Yeah. Instead of, it's kind of like going to the gym. Yeah. Some, January 1st, gym is bumping. Yeah. Right, gym is, everyone's there. You have the gym schedule, new year, new me, mm-hmm. resolution. Everyone has a gym fist. You know what I'm saying? The girls have the big water bottles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's got the yeah. water bottles yeah. at the gym. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's pumped up, and yeah. then what happens? By March, April, it's not even, bro. By end of January, by end of yeah, by by end of January, it's the same guys that are going before to Beforehand. the gym. They are still going to the gym. Sometimes you have all, one two yeah. guys that that are pushing it, but after a while, it gets empty. You so s- you see the fall off. Yeah, you see exactly. So that's why it's always good to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. With the gym, whatever, do your two three days a week. But with the dean, right? Do your juice a day. Or if you can't do ten pages a day, mm-hmm. just make sure that you're re- doing something. Sometimes I'll at least say like, "Let me do a surah, like a surah." Yeah. Oh, I read a little walk out today. Yesterday I read Surah Yusuf. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Then one day I'll just flip through a random. Like, I'll go like this, and I'll stop randomly. Mm-hmm. Like that's surah already. Because people I, people confuse people confuse quantity with quality. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's not it's not how much you do, but it's the quality of what you do. Mm-hmm. Like I can I can be praying eleven rakahs, but my salah I'm looking around. I'm not focusing mm-hmm. My mind's not on my prayer But I can have two rakahs That I'm focused now You're locked in For the two rakahs I'm khushra I'm praying this for Allah And like I put my phone aside And there's nothing bothering me That could have more edge Than the 11 rakahs Of praying without any khushra at all And mm-hmm. I wasn't even focused I was praying haphazardly Just praying up and down mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Yeah So it's more about the quality Of what you do And being And being um, uh, Conscious And uh What's what I'm looking for, man? Well, I'm forgetting words. Like right intention, now. like the right intentional, mm-hmm. intentional with your actions, right? For example, like when you're when you're you might be going to the message for Dhuhr one day, mm-hmm. and then you're like, and then you're like, you know what? Let me donate a dollar, man. Let me try to go get close to Allah by donating this dollar. Mm-hmm. Just by that con that conscious action that you're doing, maybe Allah might open doors for you of doing more good actions. Of just one dollar, just one dollar. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you so in your head, it's like, yo, I have like. Saying like a little dollar, mm-hmm. saying dollar here. Well, it's nothing. Okay. Right? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not. Flex- I'm not. Flex- I'm not. Flex- I'm not flexing. Flex- <laughs> yeah, man. Man, say pull, pull yeah. that. Off. Pull that three hundred. Like, no, I'm not flexing. Don't worry, it was one dollar. It was one dollar. <laughs> but you can donate one dollar to the masjid, right? Mm-hmm. But because you're conscious in that action, and you're like, you know what? Let me do this for Allah's sake, so that Allah can reward me and that I can, I can get closer to Him. Could be the thing that, that. That caused a blessing in your life And expiate sins And expiate sins And many more other things You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. So it's not really about How much you do Praying in the mosque all day it's, They're good action to do But focus on the quality Of what you're doing mm-hmm. Am I conscious in my prayer Right Am I sincere about my dua Am I sincere About about this charity Right mm-hmm. Am I sincere about Giving a reminder 
right? Am I doing it for Allah? Because sometimes people do something with with the with the with the with the pre-notion that you know what I might get something benefit in the dunya, but in reality, the the, the actions that you do are only for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It should not be for anybody else, mm-hmm. right? So focusing on let me please Allah, right? Let me do this, let me do this for Allah's sake. And the whole term sake of Allah is interesting because normally people would would do things. For a benefit, or or, or would do things like, a, know like a cost a benefit analysis. Exactly. There's always like there's input, input output, mm. input output. So I'm gonna do this because I know I'm getting out of it. But sometimes people we forget that. Let me do something just for Allah's sake. Mm-hmm. I may help someone out, and I don't even care about if the guy praises me or recognizes me or says thank you to me. I'm just doing because I want the edge from Allah. Sometimes they might give someone money or buying food, and the guy just walks out like yo, like you're not gonna even say thank you at least like. Mm-hmm. But like that's for Allah. It's not to get praise. Like you don't need to get your hat or like your your like recognition right now. Exactly. In this world. Because what you're doing, what you're aiming for, is Jannah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to be conscious of what you're doing, the quality over the quantity. Yeah. So very big, very important. Quality over quantity. Yeah. I like that because I think actually like speaking about like Ramadan versus out of Ramadan, something I've kind of noticed in my life, because again, like I said, like when you're consistent and you're actually doing those tiny habits over mm-hmm. time, some of the times in those tiny habits, I feel like I'm not a hundred percent locked in, but I know because it's such a habit, I'll feel like I'm missing something if I don't do it. Mm. Okay, like doha prayer. Okay, it's two raka, two raka. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm like I'll wake up and I'm like I can't pray Doha right now Like I usually do Okay mm-hmm. I'll get up and do it But sometimes I'm like My khushua is not 100% mm-hmm. It's like 70% mm-hmm. Or 60% But like If I don't do it at all I'll feel like I missed out On yeah. that prayer mm-hmm. That I usually consistently do At this point Right Just simple mm-hmm. Two raka, Two raka. And then I'm like Okay let me do it And it, I don't feel like 100% is locked in but Then I'm like okay, The charity thing Okay if I give charity here or Do this Do this Or do this good thing This is what a Muslim would do So I'm gonna do it Because mm-hmm. this is what Muslims do I'm driving on the highway yeah. And I'm going on an exit And I see someone on the side and my one friend one time was like, oh, like, I saw that and I drove by him. But then mm. I stopped and drove back because I was like, well, that, is that what a Muslim mm. would do? So in a way, it's like he, in his head, was like, well, this is what a Muslim person should be doing is mm. wa- seeing a homeless person or seeing someone who needs money and I don't go help. Mm-hmm. Like even even like for like shaitan, mm-hmm. if he can't get you to do bad deeds, he will do you, he will try you he, or he, he'll try to make you do less good deeds. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if he can't get you to sin... So, you know, this, this is just sunnah, man. Like, you don't got to do it. Like, you already pray five, 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 five times a day. Yeah. You don't have to pray the sunnah. You know what I'm saying? Like, get tired, sh- relax. So, if he can't get you to do the sunnah, you know what I'm saying? He will get you to be less. Less of the good. Of the good that you're doing. So, let's mm-hmm. say someone who's always praying salah. And yeah. Sunnah, or you're always praying your sunnah on time. Or you're always giving charity, right? Or you're always obedient to your parents. And you're you're someone who's always helping others. Then you think, you know what, like... Today you you don't have to go and visit that sick person like you know what I'm saying like you're a bit busy or today like you're tired you don't have to go to the mission today just mm-hmm. you know like you you are still praying you know what I'm saying you're mm-hmm. you're, you're not you're doing all the right things just pray at home you know yeah. what I'm saying like yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? so you try to get it like that yeah. you know just so always try your best to kind of like even though it might, like for example Fajr is tough mm-hmm. you wake up in the morning it's cold. Right, you gotta go to the masjid. And you're like, oh, you're man. tired. You're this, yeah. Like, oh man, I gotta go to the masjid. So then you you have to go get ready, make wudu. The water's a bit cold. You're shivering. You put on mm-hmm. your jacket, and then you go to the masjid. You have the car drive in. It might be 10, 15 minutes away. So shaitan, the whole time he's trying to tell you, yo, imagine like, do you want to go through all that hardship? Do you want to do all those things? And you're like, you know what? I'm still praying. Regardless, let me just pray at home. Like, mm-hmm. Boom. He he got you from, from even though it's still edges. a good deed. Yeah, but he got you from. Being in the masjid, getting the reward of praying in the jama'at, getting the reward of sitting down doing adhkar, all those things just to pray at home, which the reward is a lot less. Mm-hmm. You still did the obligation, but now your reward is a lot less. So that's, so that's what Charlie gets you, mm-hmm. especially now because after Ramadan, he's he's free, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Getting really west west and really being in your ear. Yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. So those things like you try to like fight it. Like even me, like there'll be, there'll be, there'll be sometimes where like I'll be lazy to, to do something and I'll just do it just because I'm like, yo, I can't let him beat me. Yeah, like 1v1. It's yeah. like your battle to get a 1v1. Like, like, like I'll be sitting in the mission and then, and then I'll, think, I'll, I'll feel like, yo, should, should I press on now or should I just go back to the room? So, you know, no, no, no. I'll press on now. Because mm-hmm. I, know, I know you're trying to get me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make sure I get that. I've noticed that after like Friday prayer, like uh, you can get up and go. Like I have something to do. But I'm like, no, no, no. I, just, yeah. I, can, I can press on now right now. It's just too long. Yeah. Come on, like, get yeah, up and yeah. do it. But I was going to ask you actually, like you got me thinking. How do you get out of like, I guess obviously it's a lifelong thing for everyone, but sometimes I'll notice this where you said like how it's like input output, right? You mm-hmm. do a good deed, you're, and then as a human, right? Insane, like as a human, you're expecting I do something, 
there's a uh, a reward or benefit to it or a consequence, right? Mm-hmm. So I do this. I go to the gym ten times in this month. The consequence is maintaining muscle or gaining muscle. Mm-hmm. I go zero times and eat terrible food. I will lose muscle and build fat, mm-hmm. right? There's action consequence. Action yeah. consequence. So. When you know things like, oh, donate charity, it's like 10 times Allah will bless you with mm-hmm. wealth. Like, don't think that $1 will not turn into 10 or that $20 turn into 200 right? So Allah will always duplicate whatever you give, right? Mm-hmm. You're never going to go broke giving in charity, right? Yeah. So when you know these things, okay. So then I know these things and I'm like, okay, let me give this much money. And Allah will give me times 10 that. So who cares, right? Is that the right mentality or is are you still like like – numberfying it you know what i mean like you i, know had, what I'm I saying? had the like, with someone and it's tough because yeah i for me i'm i have that kind of battle too sometimes right because but at the end of the day one thing you have to understand is there's deeds that have that have outcomes for example if someone says for example subhanallah he will be hamdi 100 times, times yeah, yeah. Day, allah forgive all your past sins right? like the if it was the with much of the yeah fun to see, right? yeah allah allah will for, for forgive your past sins right or after salah, same thing if you do the adhkar, right? SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, yeah, Allahu Akbar. 33, 33, 33. Mm-hmm. And then you end with the, the dua at the end. Mm-hmm. Then. And ayat al kursi, do you end with ayat al kursi or is it? No, you you you, you read ayat al kursi after, after that. After it, right? Yeah. Then Allah will forgive, right? The past sins, for example, right? So there's, there's these that have that have outcomes, right? But regardless, you're, you're supposed to give or do anything for the sake of Allah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Regardless. Not for the sake of your salvation. Or is that the same thing? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes I'll read those things because I'm like, okay, I've No, sit. but us, when, when, when you're doing it, it's for your salvation. It's, which is Regardless, for Allah. Which is for Allah, yeah. Do okay. this for Allah, it's for your salvation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you worship Allah, you are worshiping Allah with the hope that Allah will accept your deeds and He will save you, protect you from the hellfire. Mm-hmm. You want to raise your skills on your al Qiyamah. So mm-hmm. anything you do for Allah's sake, sincerely, you have the hope that Allah will accept it and you have the hope that Allah will forgive you and that Allah will... By but but th- through Allah's mercy that you enter into paradise. So at the Not end of the day, from your good deed because you, you don't go to heaven based exactly. on your good deed. You go by Allah's, Allah's mercy. mercy. Exactly, exactly. So you at the end of the day you're working for for Allah's salvation regardless because mm-hmm. we need Allah. Allah does not need, need us. us. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's yeah. a good point. And I also think this about this just because we're talking about it, is that when I first started like this journey, I would say of like becoming a better Muslim and really diving into my faith. The beginning felt so fun almost, you know, where it's mm. like the... You're like zealous. Yeah, like I'm like doing yeah. all this, like, oh God, I felt good about it. I'm like, mm. oh, look, at you. Oh, look. Like, you feel more sincere about it. Mm. But now that it's become so habitual, I almost don't feel the same. Maybe it's because of, like, when you have a new toy and you, yeah. you play with it for the fir- first 10 days, you're in love. Mm. Every single day you op- you can't wait to go home from school mm. and play on, play mm. with this toy. Then a month later, it's a little less. A year later, it's way less. Then 10 years later, have you ever had, when's the last time you thought about that toy? Yeah. So I have this feeling now where it's like, even with like the daily of the call, daily, daily that, like it's become this habitual ingrained thing in my mm. life, but it doesn't give you that same like rush that you had before. Exactly, so then exactly. how do you like, Make sure that the sincerity stays good, even though it's such a consistent thing. So, like the the beautification of it kind of dulls a little bit for you because it's so consistent. Mm, to, so the, uh, as, I, as a very good point, the Prophet Sallam, he said Sorry. in the hadith that a man wears out just like the clothes wear out. The clothes after, after you wear from like like you said the toys, right? Mm-hmm. If you wear a shirt for many many years after washing it and drying it, right, it wears out. So he said uh, that a man wears out just like clothes mm-hmm. wear out. So ask Allah to always renew your iman. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So ask Allah to always, Ya Allah, keep my iman high. Because when, when you keep have... Keep my... Ha- yeah, that. But ask Allah to restore your iman. Because mm-hmm. your iman wears out to restore it. Because yeah. the thing that drives us to do good deeds is our iman. Mm-hmm. Right? Because iman increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. Yeah. So the more iman you have, the more you have the 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 inspiration to do good deeds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the more yeah. good deeds you do, the more you want the more good deeds. But the more sins you commit, the more that the the good deeds feel more difficult to do. Mm-hmm. Even though physically you're able to do it, like salah is not physically tiring. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or or for example like um or walking to the masjid, you know what I'm saying? If it's close by, it's not physically tiring. Like you won't be hurt by doing it. Yeah. But the reason you can't do it is because your iman is low. Your soul is the one that's driving you to do good deeds. Right? Of yeah. course, after, after the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's your iman, that, it's your soul that drives you to, to do good deeds. Yeah. So when your soul is filled with iman, then you feel the, the strength to, to do good deeds. Have, have you ever felt those moments where like, you, you, you just want to do more? 
like I, like I heard a Quran, like, I want to do more. Yeah, that like, Kari, you know what? Like a rush, like a rush. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that 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 high that zealous iman 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 feeling. You know what I'm saying? So, but by doing more bad deeds and by committing sins, mm-hmm. then you have less of that feeling. You feel more lazy to do deeds, right? You feel more tired, mm-hmm. right? Uh, or for example, right? Someone who gets up for the Hajj prayer, you pray the Hajj, you made wudu, you, f- you made dua, you feel like, you know what? Like I feel good right now. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what? Let me go pray Fajr in the Masjid. But after Fajr, let me stay in Tushuluk and pray to the Qasr. So now, like the good deeds are piling up and your iman is increasing, which is which is fueling you to do more good deeds. Like the snowball effect. It's, exactly. It. So, but when you commit sins and you and you and you do bad deeds, you're like, oh man, like I don't want to. It's tough mm-hmm. to do. Pray Salah or Fajr is tough, or I don't want to go to the Masjid. But when your iman is high, you're ready to go to the Masjid early. You're mm-hmm. planning for it. You know. So that's why when when someone when someone is feeling that habitual consistency and they feel like they're not like feeling the sweetness. Was ask Allah to story man and, yeah. and 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 try to be more more conscious of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Right, try to actually think because sometimes we do so much that we we're not conscious of what we're doing. So even me, like I'll be in salah sometimes. I'll give you a good example: the fatiha. Mm-hmm. People forget the, people forget that the fatiha is a dua. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're, asking, yeah. you're asking Allah to guide you straight path. Yeah. So, so everyone just saying uh, and keep you I mean, and keep like, you away from like a cursed shaitan and yeah. So like people forget like everyone just saying uh, <laughs> I mean, but they forget that what we're saying what is we're important. Saying, like yeah. oh Allah, like we we seek your assistance and there's no one else we worship and please guide us guide us to straight path the mm-hmm. path that you are pleased with not the path that those who are, that those that you are angry with or yeah. those are the misguided. Mm-hmm. So so when you really think about that consciously. You're like, I mean, Ya Allah, please, like, the I mean, you're thinking, oh Allah, keep me firm upon yeah. religion. So when you're constantly thinking about what you're doing, you feel that, you feel that, uh, that, 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 you feel, how do I say it? You feel, you, you feel like you're, you're in the moment. Yeah, like you're yeah. moved by the energy that yeah. you're going you with f- this. Yeah, you feel like you're in the moment and you feel good about, about what you're doing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that goes back to khushua, like having that level, high level of like concentration in the prayer, in what you're saying. And mm-hmm. I think for me, like again, being born Muslim, I guess you kind of go through this. And I think I started like really like locking in on like no- remembering what I'm saying is when I noticed one of my friends who reverted to Islam, Inshallah. learn like the faith hat in English because he didn't speak mm-hmm. like no Arabic enough to say it. And he literally memorized everything in English and did the prayer fully in English. So, mm-hmm. like, pra- I guess, like, you know, pray. Mm-hmm. But then, like, one by one, he, like, learned the fat, learned, like, um, the tashahud, every, every little part, right? Mm-hmm. And I was kind of, like, thinking, I was like, that means that right now, he knows how to say it in Arabic, but he also knows Those exactly meaning. what he's saying. Yeah. And I was thinking how beautiful that was. And I was like, Do I, could I right now translate every word? At that time, I was like, could I translate every word? And I was like, oh, my God, I can't. Like mm-hmm. I can't translate to someone in English right now, mm-hmm. and I was like, and that like like it, like snapped into my head like yo I better like let me hold up yeah. let, let me make sure I know exactly. And the thing is when you're like looking at it like okay I do know what I'm saying, but it's mm-hmm. a matter of like I want to make sure I know each yeah. little part. You know what I mean? Then you're like, huh? Like it, it like, inspired me to see that, and I was like, huh? Like that increased my khushu a little bit. Now it's like if I'm like Subhanahu wa taala Subhanahu wa taala, I know what that means. If I'm Subhanahu wa taala Azim Subhanahu wa taala Subhanahu wa I'm like like the law exalted right exalted. Mm-hmm. And I was like okay. Why didn't I know that for 16, 18, 24 years yeah. of my life? Mm-hmm. Why did it take me that long to like actually know exactly what that meant yeah. and translate it to English? Because like in Arabic, like you hear the words so many times that you don't realize like what it actually translates to in your head to like other languages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think the thing for me that was like a that's a big thing for khushur or just knowing knowing what things mean, especially in salah, is the one of the main things that give you concentration. Mm-hmm. The fatiha, the the eyes that you you, you read in salah, their meanings. Right, all the little things, um, the rukur, the sujood, mm-hmm. the shahud, right, the du'as you make in the salah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, it, once you understand it, then you're you, you're you're able to feel what you're saying mm-hmm. well, and what you're asking Allah to help you with. Exactly. But if you don't if you don't feel it, if you don't understand what you're saying, then you can't really feel it. It's just lip service. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But That's what, why I find it hard for like people who don't speak. Like, again, I speak Arabic, so because yeah. I speak Arabic, I. And obviously the Quran is in Arabic yeah. And what we recite is in Arabic So for me Even though I speak Arabic Some of the Because Egyptian Arabic I'm a, Like you're not really speaking like that, I just, I mean, <laughs> You're not really speaking like 100% Arabic sometimes To yeah, be honest like, yeah. it's, it's like the slang It's super slang Egyptian was Bro I kind of like Just a side, side note <laughs> Egyptian Arabic I don't know what y'all say, man. I, I don't, bro. Because no one else speaks it in the sense of like the. But we can understand other all other Arabic. Yeah, so yeah. to me, I'm like, why didn't we all just speak a similar Arabic? Because me, like, I, I learned Fusha, You know what I'm saying? So me, I don't like. Mm-hmm. I know like a few dialects here and there that I can pick up words. 
But when it comes to Egyptian, bro, bro, when I remember when when I landed in Egypt, I don't know what they were saying. And they speak so fast too. So then it's so like, like rough. I'm saying like, I'm like, what's guy, huh? what's guy, what's guy talking about right now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they laugh, and and, so, and sometimes they they, they they laugh at you for speaking fusha. You know what I'm saying? They're like, what's, yeah. what's, what's the guy doing? Oh, because he's not Egyptian. He's not yeah, Egyptian. Yeah, I'm not Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? Even when I speak Egyptian dialect to other Egyptians, because I don't live there, and I don't know like the little new slang word that they created over the last six months. Yeah, they look at me like, ah, oh, he's not from here. I'm mm. like. Okay, but I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what you're saying, bro. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, I can yeah. speak with you back and forth. Yeah. Cake, cake. Yeah. Just because, like, I don't know this one little word that you created yeah. over the last six months doesn't mean that yeah. I don't know Arabic, you know? That's true. But knowing that you, you, you know the Quran and the words Quran helps you out. Enough, right? But then I get really impressed when, like, someone who speaks just Urdu or Turkish or even who just speaks Mandarin or Cantonese and they're reciting Quran or, like, understanding Quran. I'm just like, like, I'm, like, amazed by it. You know, mm. I'm like... How are they understanding what's being said if they don't even speak the language? Mm-hmm. So then when... That's the beauty of the Quran, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Is that it's very easy to learn, understand. It's a very rich language. You know what I'm saying? The Quran has thousands of miracles. Mm-hmm. That, that Literally, there, there will be times there will be times where I'll read the ayah. And I read this ayah like multiple times. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like maybe a hundred times. Maybe mm-hmm. just Ahmad, Laura Surahs. Mm-hmm. I'll read it one time like, yo... This eye is deep. I yeah. Know what I'm or sometimes the same verse in itself would I would I'll read it and I'll, I'll have a different underst- like a different feeling from the same from verse, the same verse yeah different situations like oh this this verse really helped me on this situation but it'll be a whole different situation and the same verse will be like yo this verse actually kind of kind of helped me on this situation mm-hmm. that's the beauty the Quran has. Tense miracles because so it's the word of Allah, man. Yeah. The word of and Allah is perfect. The word of Allah is perfect. You know what I, I'm saying? I think something that helped me recently was um someone was telling me like it was like. Explaining that, look at every single line as its own thing. Like, because every single line is so perfect. So, mm. every single line has something to tell you. Mm. Even if it's like just setting you up for the next line, yeah. it still has a sense of like a beauty behind it. And then mm. the recent uh, khutbah we had on Friday, this past Friday, this the guy was saying, he was like, he was he basically was saying, like, look at like the Quran, look at all the lessons that you're learning throughout mm-hmm. the Quran, all the little stories. And they're not just, oh, what a cool story. You know, Yusuf went through this. Oh, Muhammad went through this. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, Nuh went through this, right? Everyone went through this. So okay, wow, such a story, right? Yeah. But he's like, these aren't just stories. These are literal lessons. Mm-hmm. Like each line is a bar, right? Each line is a lesson. Each mm-hmm. line is so wide, such a wit, like yeah. so much something to take from it. And like you were saying, like, like and for me, like I'll read something and like, I'm like, Hold up, like well, I read this before how many times, and I'm like, yeah, Whew, like that hitting right now. Like, mm. well, how is this? Like, and it, again, like when you hear something over and over again, at some point it clicks in a different way. So I think like that's like as your brain matures and you mm-hmm. see something and think of something deeper and deeper. Like, cause thinking is a skill. So the more you think about whatever this line was or is, you'll kind of have a different meaning for it every time you mm-hmm. kind of indulge in that richness. Sometimes I get this moment where I'll be reading, I, for example, I read a verse, I'm reading, reading. Mm-hmm. And then something just clicks, boom. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, yo. I'll be like, yo. Yo, that's deep. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's deep. Then I look at it again. I was like, how come I never thought of that like this? Yeah. So, so the times where it gets me, man, especially where, like times where like I'm down for something or, you know, like something's happened to me and I need that kind of like that, that reassurance. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll be like, man. Sometimes it'd be crazy. Sometimes I'll, like, I'll, I, would, I would look for a solution. And I opened the Mus'haf And the first ayah I read Boom That's the answer that I needed the whole time mm-hmm. I'm like subhanAllah man It's interesting man But I want to ask you though mm-hmm. I want to ask you In Ramadan What what was your funniest experience in Ramadan? My funniest? Yeah like what's something that's, that's like Funny experience Hmm Funniest I guess I had a couple honestly That I thought of just real quick you know something I find funny? And even though it's not a, just a Ramadan thing, but something I always find funny is when shiuch or imams or whoever, mm-hmm. when they ask for money mm-hmm. and, like, donations. Yeah. And, like, obviously, like, we laugh, like, in, like, other cultures, like, even, like, in Catholic or Christian cultures, they have, like, the, the thing they pass around yeah. or in other different cultures, like, to donate and do all these mm-hmm. things, right? But something I always find funny about, like, the way, like, some, like, Islamic ways of asking for it sometimes when they're, like, up on the pulpit, right? They're mm-hmm. up on, like, the stage or they're talking. They're, like, all right, brothers, sisters, we're going to start at donations with $20,000, mm-hmm. first donation. And, like, everyone's, like, mad quiet. And it's, like, it feels like a classroom where the teacher's, like, everyone raise your hand now. Who knows the answer? Yeah. And everyone's sitting there. And I'm in my head, like, I was sitting there thinking, like, yo, this 
feels so awkward every time this happens. You know, you know why though? I can't lie. Personally, like if so, if someone if they said like who wants to raise, let's say for example, five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and I had it. Personally speaking, I don't want to raise my hand. That's what I feel too. Like I would want to raise my hand and be like, "Yeah, I'm rolling. Give me yeah. fifty bands right here. Like here you go. I'll raise." Personally, my- like I would, I would do on the lowest, like right, little form yeah. and, and hand it. Cause I, don't, I don't like personally that like, show everyone. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, cause I know like there's a there's a hadith where it's like if you're donating with your right hand, don't let your left hand show see yeah, how much to, you're donating. To be like, a, like to so be if that's the case, secret. then how are people asking me for money twenty thousand in front of people? It's like but it should be done though. Like it needs to be done. Like you have to raise money regardless. Yeah, you know yeah. of but, course, by your attention. But it's like a, it's like a feeling. You know, it's me, it's me personally. Yeah, that's how I feel too. It's me personally. I'm not saying guys give don't donate to the mission. If they ask you if you have it, put your hands up. Make sure you donate because the mosque needs your donations. Yeah. For personal, it's hard for me to kind of put my hand. That's up. why I feel like I donate on the pa- after. Like yeah, yeah. I'll see it and be like, I'll, like, there was a moment where like the guy was giving like the pamphlet mm-hmm. out. Anyways, I was like, yeah, just like can I get that pamphlet. Like, mm-hmm. I was like low key like. Yo, like yeah. Just I took a picture and like thank you. So I took a picture so that I can donate on my own time, like when I can and mm-hmm. stuff. But it was just made me feel like, like it's it's like funny every time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because then like everyone's looking around. Yeah, yeah. Who's 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 the guy to pay? And then like, but I can't let the first guy who pays gets the craziest dua. Really? So, so sometimes I be like, yeah, I want that dua, man, because the imam will make dua for you, bro. <laughs> May Allah bless you, your family, your children, yeah. your spouse. I ain't even married, but your spouse. You know what I'm saying your spouse too. So I'm like. Should I just put my hand up just for the dua? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but Obi, but Obi, but they they make real dua for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I always I always find that kind of funny. I guess yeah. like to me when I see it, like the fundraising moments mm-hmm. in Ramadan and stuff, because I kind of laugh because like I like seeing it, but I'm also like I noticed this though because of that. Like I remember talking to a group of a bunch of like people at like a dinner and some like, a bunch of Egyptians got together mm-hmm. to have a dinner, and they were kind of talking about it. And I was they were wondering like, oh, like when people ask like. Sometimes it's like to over ask for like twenty thousand, twenty thousand, mm. and like it's been like five, six minutes, and like yeah. no one else said, "Hey, me." So it's yeah. like it's like you're you're dragging it mm-hmm. almost, and it was uncomfortable. But some people will take away from that and be like, "That was uncomfortable," which I did too at one point. But also, like at some point, it kind of made me think, like, let me make dot to be among the people who can just do that casually. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so that's one thing about being. So it's like tricking your rich. mind to be abundant mindset yeah. rather than the scarcity mindset. And I think like mm. Islamically, I noticed that Allah is of the abundance mindset. Shaitan as well will put you in the scarcity mindset. So I started thinking like when you see this situation where you have that awkward, funny moment, try not to think of that negative like scarcity mindset where it's like, yo, bro, who's got twenty ba- bands to throw at you right now? Mm. Or it's like, oh, Allah, make me of the people who can give you. Give twenty bands mm-hmm. right away and get that first dot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like tricking your brain into like doing the next mm-hmm. one. So I guess that was, I guess, like what I was done for me, man. Was uh, was when I, when I was leading at the masjid. <laughs> this made me laugh. Shout out to the one uncle. May Allah bless him and grant him jannah, and may Allah preserve him and grant him khair. Mm-hmm. When I was leading, there was one guy. I don't know who he is. I don't know. I've never met him, but he had one belch. Every salat like for tarawih, I'll just I'm praying, I'm praying, and I hear him, and it's the burp that comes, like from like the inner deep stuff from, from, so. from the soul, and I'm hearing it, and it was every day. I said, this uncle still on business, <laughs> uncle's <laughs> uncle, every day. I was like, yo, man, I don't know who he is, but may Allah bless him, Grand Jedi, man. That feels hilarious, yeah. Because maybe once in a while you hear, but it was a daily thing. I, every single day me and my brother were talking about it one day we were like it's cool because even in a moment like that where it's like it's like A you can judge them B you can this 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 right so, but then me and my brother were like what if he has a condition that like he just his body doesn't like process food properly probably you know what I mean or it's like he didn't eat all day yeah. ate and like it gotta come go somewhere true. it was funny to me because it was every single day like a consistent it was, habit it was consistent that's what's funny to me you know what I'm saying because sometimes it randomly happens here yeah it's normal it's normal it was consistent I said yo man that for me was hilarious man that for me <laughs> It was that, that was like for Ramadan. That was, it was hilarious, bro. But one thing about Ramadan was the iftars, man. Mm-hmm. Iftars. I had a different bunch of cuisines. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying I had your Egyptian cuisine, mm-hmm. the mosque, and they pumped me. They pumped. You know what I'm saying my <laughs> food, food, food. Bunch of desi food, biryani, spicy food. You know what I'm saying even though I don't like spicy food, mm-hmm. I can't deal with that spice. Mm-hmm. Until I realized the the desi spice and the normal spice are, are different. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like 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 the, the the normal spice it gives like a little kick to your food, mm-hmm. but the desi spice is supposed to burn you internally. That's his <laughs> job. I realize, I realize the purpose of the desi spice. The purpose is supposed to destroy you internally. 
Like once I eat desi food, bro, spicy, I'm done, bro. D and D airplane mm-hmm. mode. Inshallah, see you tomorrow with another cream. I'm I'm off. Yeah, because I, I have had one time for after Ramadan. Sorry for for iftar. Mm-hmm. And bro, wallahi, I was smoked. I was I was doing tarawih and my stomach, bro, it was I was burning. My chest was burning. I Sometimes it is a little hot. Like obviously they always say like Indian or Desi like medium is actually yeah. like a hot. But for them, it's normal. Like, for them, like, yeah. for them, it's normal. Me, I have a low tolerance. So for them, like, that's not as spicy. Bro, I'm eating the food. I'm, I'm sweating, opening up my butt, and I'm trying to, like, breathe. You know what I'm saying? It'd be, it'd be hot. But in this Ramadan, or in general, what are your top three cuisines that you'll say? Hmm. Top three cuisines. <laughs> okay, this is, like, out of left field completely. But um, I got into making poke bowls, which is, like, uh a high or he tuna which is it's like it basically like raw fish like sushi kind of style but okay. like or like uh put in like a poke bowl so you make it with like put like a side of mango edamame um ginger you put like rice or spring mix at the bottom mm-hmm. um like tomatoes cucumbers you know it's like almost like a a sushi salad kind of mm-hmm. so I, I that's probably one of my top three um what is it, like Asian cuisine? Yeah, it was like Asian. It's like Asian cuisine. You know, it's like a fish sushi style okay. food that I like. Excuse me, learning to make myself and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, what else? Uh, obviously, I can't go wrong with like obviously Egyptian cuisine that I eat at home, like any kind. You know, where it's mm-hmm. like the kofta or um, mashi. Like I guess it's like things I like. Okay, but I'm talking about non, but like non biased though. Talk about taste, not bias. Oh, like top three in general. Yeah, like f- that I had that I had personally. Like, yeah. Okay, then yeah, like the poke bowls, like I, I would say like either like steak with like steaks or um kofta like mash- mashuyet. They say mashuyet. Yeah. You know mashuyet mm-hmm. that we have like in our culture as well. And what else was buzzing that I had? So now you got me thinking about the food I ate. I always have a consistent breakfast, so breakfast isn't like. Anything special. Mm. It's either eggs or protein oatmeal. Like, mm. You know, it's either one or the other. Huh. Honestly, I don't know, dude. Like, I think that's just the only two that are coming to mind. I would I say, would say the, person, person is number one, Somali food. Mm-hmm. Do you had you had Somali food this, in the Ramadan? Kind of, yeah. I had a bit. But in general. Okay. Top three cuisines. And this is, I know I'm Somali. Yeah, but yeah. putting the bias aside. It'd be hitting. Straight off taste. It'd be, brother, mm-hmm. Somali food. <laughs> Somali food be banging, brother. I'm telling you. What's good. the best? What's the best part of Somali food? Like, say the dish. That's so like, for example, like in a lot of Turkish cuisines, the meshuyet is like excellent. Mm. Like the like kebabs, the koftas, like the chicken, like the way they grill and stuff. Like Turkish is Turkish is known for like high level, the best like like meshuyet. Mm. Egypt's known for some. This is, what's like Somalia known for? Like number like out of like the the piece. Of, like what's on the plate? Like the carb, the protein, the salad. Like what's on the plate of a Somali dish that's like I ain't gonna lie Somali food is not that healthy to be honest mm-hmm. like there's a lot of like oils but when it comes to like okay, this breakfast the breakfast you have the anjero or, or some people call it a huh, mm-hmm. right it's kind of like um, it's like a non-sweet crepe mm-hmm. but it's not sweet though you know what like I'm a savory crepe savory yeah so you, so you so you can have it with tea you can have it with with, with, with meats it was, mm-hmm. like, with like suqar on the side you know what I'm saying uh, you have the maloah it's more of a, a sweeter crepe sweeter. it kind of reminds me of fatir it's like fatir. I don't know fatir is. So in Egypt we eat something called fatir, but fatir it's like it's like um two pieces. It's almost like thin bread. It's not bread, but it's like thin. I don't know why I'm blanking, but it's like really thin. Like it's almost like bread, but it's not. But it's thin. You put either like sausage in it. You could put uh, pastrami in it. You could put a lot of maybe similar whatever. I don't know. But you could also put um, Nutella in it with like powdered sugar on top. Yeah, it's like you almost stuff it with whatever. It yeah, is. but that one you have on the side, you you eat it by itself, or you eat it with the, the sukkar for breakfast, or you can mm-hmm. add stuff to it. You yeah, know what yeah, yeah. Then the lunch you have saying the 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 bris, the mm-hmm. rice, the rice. Then you have the hilipari, the goat meat. Oh man, when it's made well, bro. Got me off the bone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You How do you have the banana on the side? The banana is a must. How do you prepare like the, the meat in like Somali culture? There's many ways to, to make it. A lot of mess. That's, I'm not really in the kitchen like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> but all I know is that the banana on the side, though. Bro, the, you have is it like a banana. plantain? No, it's a banana. Like an actual banana. Because I know, banana. like in like Jamaican or like um, like Caribbean cultures, it's like plantains. No, no this is a banana. This banana. is a banana banana. Banana banana on the side. The banana you have to have with the meal. Mm-hmm. You have the rice. 
the hilib or the side the meat and then you can have it with it probably with chicken suqar mm-hmm. right with the with the with banana or you can have like a like a sabayat or it's called like a chapati for people I know mm-hmm. like called the chapati a chapati so what is that exactly I'll explain my chapati. Chapati is like a the the the. This is my note because they they also use that same word chapati. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm not explaining. It. It's kind of like it's kind of like it's, it's, it's like a thicker. It's like a thicker bread. It's like a bit thicker. Mm-hmm. And then you, it's like rip it apart. Yeah, but it, rip it apart. when you rip it apart, does it get just thinner like layers? Yeah, you know how like Moroccans have something similar. Moroccans have. I know exactly what you're talking called, about. It's called the uh, Moro- uh, I had it once at a Moroccan guy's house. It's called. It's like a square. Bro, I know exactly what you're talking about. We have it too. Yeah, Those yeah. ones. And that, low key, we use it in our fatir. And what I'm saying, like, they stuff it. Mm. Like, you can stuff, like, it's like there's certain layers. So you can, like, low key stuff it and put, um like, stuff in it as well. For somebody, I don't know if you can stuff it. I don't know if you can stuff it. I, I, I've, never seen it I've never seen it stuffed before. But it's like, where you pull it, it's like pieces come off. Yeah. The rock is called, it's called, um. Dude, I'm going to think of an Arabic. It's called. One second, let me go right now. I know it's called, man. Sorry, yeah. one second. Uh, let me just go Moroccan bread. Dude, now see, you got me thinking. I literally, you know, I know it's. My dad comes home with it sometimes, but the thing is, we don't eat it often. That's the thing. It's called um, right here. It looks like this. Msemin, msem. I don't know what's called. This one right here. I don't know if you. I'm talking about. Malui. It's, yeah. It's similar to that. You know what's funny? It's like we do this, but it's like it's it's a bit like flakier. It's yeah. like a very similar style, but it's flaker. I don't know why I'm blanking right now, but that's what it's called. But yeah, they, yeah but that. So Somali food number one, bang. Number two is, ooh, number two, there's a lot of good cuisines. Mm-hmm. What's a very underrated cuisine that I like? Mm-hmm. Afghani food. Mm-hmm. Afghani food is nice. Beef mm-hmm. shami, chicken shami. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying with the with the rice. Is the, it more like slow roasted, like slow roasted meat, or is no, it so the, the skewers, the skewers, the skewers, uh, yeah, skewers yeah, yeah. or skewers, 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 yeah, yeah, skewers. That's a weird word. Yeah, <laughs> skewer, and then it's soft meat. It's like ground beef. Mm-hmm. They put it in the sheep and they put it on the skewer, and then you have beef or chicken. I like mm-hmm. that personally. But you also have the 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 chicken tikka, or whatever, and mm-hmm. you have the 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 rice, the little carrots on top. Little carrots. And they have raisins, but I'm not a raisin and a raisin guy. I don't like raisins and yeah, rice. I so don't like I don't, it I'm, not, I'm not a fan of it. Anytime I see it, I, I actually get like, a cup set. Actually, you know, it's funny. Like, Somalis love raisins and rice. And I tell them no raisin. They're like, yo, I, I, don't, I don't like you. it at all. Yeah, I don't like it. So I like rice, like, not bland, but, like, simple. Like, because I think, like, the mm. dish needs, like, a base. And mm. the base of the rice being, like, either brown rice or white rice, whatever it is, or basmati, jasmine. Mm. I don't, doesn't matter what rice. Mm. But as long as like it has a nice thing to put it with, my dad always like. I guess I learned from my dad's like take a little bit of this with the rice, mm-hmm. like one by one you finish this with this until like you kind of get to the point of like it all mixes. Mm-hmm. It's like one by one. But sometimes like when I'm like, when I was younger, I was like, rice this yeah on top yeah eat it as it is like on the plate mm-hmm. so this is easier to eat. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I've always liked I guess that bl- yeah. like more of a bland mm-hmm. rice even though it's so flavorful because we put spices in our rice mm-hmm. and different things what are some things you, uh, Somalis put in their rice for like the spice or like like the seasoning in the rice or is it always like a bland white rice no no put that, that everything bro the seasoning I forget the names man the hawash I don't know mm-hmm. they add the seasoning on top they add the seasoning yeah. and stuff you know what I'm saying they have that stuff but uh, I'll say for my third dish that I've, I liked recently since, since I came mm-hmm. soul food mm. Oh, and she, the, she, uh, mm. and the sister came with the mac and cheese, the, the fried chicken, oh, bro, the came, collard greens. Allah, <laughs> may Allah bless her sister, may Allah grant her jannah, and may Allah It was delicious, was, dude. Bro, may Allah bless her, man. She got the soul food, the mac and cheese. She had the, she had the, she had the barbecue chicken. Mm-hmm. Then she had the fried chicken. Then she had the collard greens. I'm not even a greens guy like that, but the collard greens were banging. And then she also had some stew with it, bro. It was immaculate, Wallah. The mac and cheese was so good. The mac and cheese was banging. Man. So the good. mac and cheese was banging. And it was funny. I, I okay, had you know it. what? That's my third. That's my third. But think about that's it. That's the top three. <laughs> think about you it. Just you me had the I mac had and cheese when it was cold. That's what I was, that's what I was telling was my banging. brother. That's what I was telling my brother. I'm like, dude, it was cold. Like, imagine that right out came the, late. Imagine right out the oven. Oh. Sister, right may Allah bless you and grant you genitive thoughts in Ireland, inshallah. I mean. <laughs> I mean. No, no, that, that was definitely in my top three also. I was that, the Ramadan. bowls I made, and then, yeah. like, obviously, my classic, like, the mashuyat yeah. that I had all Ramadan. Soul food was, soul food was banging. So Recently, in, 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 the, in New York, I had was African food. Mm-hmm. Bro, first time having it. Mm-hmm. It was great. Like, Ghanaian, Mali? I think it was, like, it was Ga- Gambian, Senegalese. Yeah. I think Ghanaian, like, like a mix of West African food. Mm-hmm. We had, we had what's called the Dibi lamb. Mm-hmm. The meal was amazing. With some tiab. Banging 
uh, had the jollof, of course. You gotta mm. have the jollof. Yeah, the jollof is a must. Yeah, the, whether it be Nigerian or Ghanaian, they argue. They they'll have argue, the beef, huh? <laughs> They'll argue all the time for who's the best. I don't know, man, guys. Put in the comments who has a better jollof. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know. If, do you have any viewers from that are Nigerian? Probably, uh, maybe one or two, but for yeah. now, inshallah more, inshallah more. Yeah. But you had the jollof. It was, it was very good. And then you had like the onions and you had the the, the, the veggies on it. And they had some, some pasta thing. I don't know what it was called. It was good. And they had a drink called a drink called Bissap. It's like, mm-hmm. a, it's like a vegetable that they boil. Mm-hmm. And then they do some, I don't know what it is. It was red. Absolutely banging. I think they add ginger to it. But it's it called Bissap. Was, was, it like, it was it like a vegetable drink? I don't know what it was. It, was a, it looked like Vimto. But it wasn't Vimto. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't bubbly. It was like a, like a still drink. It was like a, yeah, it was like a juice. It looked like Vimto. You know Vimto? Mm-hmm. You don't know Vimto? Vimto, I don't know. Do you know Shani? I'm blanking, bro. Vimto, bro. The one they have in the bottle is like liquid. You add water to it and it's like red. Mio? Not Mio. Vimto. Wallahi, you got me. I'm lost. Bro, you free right now? Wallahi. Wallahi. Maybe I'm just blanking. Vimto is the classic red juice they have like in most cultural stores like Arab, Somali. Like Kerkere? Yes, kind of. But it's not. But Kerkere is like, like, I think that's Sudani. It's red, right? It's red, yeah. But it's those leaves. Yeah. It's not that though. This is Vimto. This is more sweeter. Vimto is like it's like uh like, You know what's funny? It's probably another word that I'm thinking of. SubhanAllah, man. SubhanAllah, man. Yeah, Allah, man. Is it it's not bitter though? No, it's not bitter. It's, the, not, is it's it, a juice. It's a juice. But they make it into the juice by putting mount sugar in it. No, there's two. This right here. This is Vimto. It's a bottle with syrup, or you 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 can buy it in a can. I know exactly. See, I don't like this. I tried it, bro. I do not like it. I've tried it once. That's why you have me thrown. I've tried it before because obviously, like, you know, Vimto? I don't know why. It's too, like, I don't know. The taste so always threw. Is it like kind of? It's kind of sweet, though, right? I like Gaju with it. I like Gaju. I like Gaju. Back to the path. Vimto is actually banging. So we had. Like, you know like me, that. though. I don't like super sweet things. And I think it's really sweet. Is it not? Yeah, yeah. I'm a sweet guy, so I like sweet things. You know what I'm it's saying? It's like very sweet, though, right? Like, I'm not tweaking. Like, I remember having it. It's not too sweet, though. No, it's not too sweet. When I had it, bro, it, I, and I felt like it was like. It depends. If you buy the can, the can is different. But if you buy the syrup, you can choose how much water you want to add. So that syrup, I had it, like, Desi cultures have it a lot. It's called, it's called, it's called Ruhafza. And I've had it before so with like, de- like a couple of desis and stuff. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I felt like it was too syrupy and it threw me off forever. Yeah, that's probably why. They I know there's probably a, a good balance. Water there's water there's probably a good balance somewhere out there, right? But for some reason, that one day I had it, I was like maybe like 13, bro. And like mm-hmm. the masjid, I was drinking it. And I thought, oh, this is about a bust. Because I look, yeah. you know, it looked cool. It looked good. I'm like, oh, let me try this. Well, I was like, oh, no, this is the same for me. And I, to this day, I've never tried it again. Well, it's nice, man. I like it. So, so it was a drink like that. It's called Bisap. Mm-hmm. It looks like, like it looked like it, but it, they said it was made from like a vegetable or a fruit. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, pretty cool though. But it was very good. So, what's African food? A big up what's African food, mashallah. They make they make very very good food. But this is what I'll say. Those are my those are my uh, top three uh, cuisines. Top three cuisines that I liked a lot, man. About Ramadan. But one thing that I'm sad about Ramadan is how the mosque is empty, man. Like now, like now, a lot of people be in there, right? Yeah, like the like the whole vibe and energy that was in Ramadan. It's not there anymore, bro. Because mm-hmm. everyone normally it happens like eight day, people just go back to their normal lives and mm-hmm. work and just back to regular ways. But like I was, I was telling someone, and I was saying it before. Mm-hmm. You saying the one khutbah like after the yeah? So I was saying, uh, when when I was in Kenya, when this is Ramadan twenty twenty two, mm-hmm. so I was in I was in the masjid for Maghrib. So there's two brothers. I think it was a Somali brother and an Egyptian brother. Mm-hmm. So this, so they're both talking And the Somali brother said You know subhanAllah man Like it's sad how The masjid is empty After Ramadan And the Egyptian guy Made a, made a big statement Like mm-hmm. I tweeted it like it, was, mm-hmm. it was that big mm-hmm. He said that The masjid has, has guests And a family Right The guests have left And the family Have stayed mm-hmm. So the family Of the masjid The people who are always there Have stayed And the guests Who just came for the Ramadan period mm-hmm. Have left So when he said that man I was like, that's deep, because it made you realize, like, am I really a member of the family? Yeah, am I someone who's am I someone who's considered al masjid, the family, a person who's connected to the masjid, and mm. one one person on Yom Al Qiyama, who who will be who will be under Allah's shade, is someone whose heart was tied to the masjid. Mm-hmm. He will be amongst the seven who are shaded on Yom Al Qiyama on the day where there is no shade. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, when I heard that, I'm like, subhanAllah, I ask Allah, oh Allah may, may Allah make us amongst those who are tied to the masjid and always pray at the masjid. And it's nice, man. Mm-hmm. When, when there's a community around the masjid, it's exciting to go. Mm-hmm. Seeing the imam there, seeing the kid running around, the youth come to the masjid, the the, the, the uncles chilling and talking, reading Quran. It's nice seeing a masjid that's vibrant. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying you feel like I feel like I'm uh, I'm, I'm home. Mm-hmm. And what's beautiful about Islam is, and they clocked me yesterday when I came to the masjid and it was it was empty. So we're praying, and an, an African brother walked in, and we just pray side to side and we're praying together. And it's like I don't know this guy. He doesn't know me. But the reason why we're standing together is because of Islam. Like, I don't know his name. I don't know what yeah, he does. Yeah, we know I the reason know why we just stand next to each other. Yeah. Like, when happened, st- 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 like, we're just like toe to toe, side by side. Mm-hmm. So, and there's no words are spoken either. No words spoken. Literally, like, after Salah did Atkar, Salaam and he left. So I thought about, like, you know what's deep about Islam? It's like, I don't know. Someone's like a police stranger to me. But we're standing toe to toe, right? And we're praying to Allah. Together. T- together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's all, it's all love, it's all mutual love, all respect. Salam alaikum. Mm-hmm. But outside, if, if I go to someone in the street, I stand toe to toe, I'm like, yo. Will you back up? Yeah. Yo, you're too close, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. But Islam, like, it brings people together. I don't know his name till today. I'm saying, I don't know where he's from eth- ethnicity. I don't know what he does. You, you said you don't know his name, nothing. Like, just, nothing about just him. the guy who came, came to the mission and brings that by side. Yeah. We're happy, we start praying together. That's the beauty of Islam. But, but, but uh, inshallah, I hope the mission becomes more and more packed, man. It's like, it's out of sea, man. No, I know what you mean. It's weird too because I know that um, when it's easy to get there, like say for example in this area, like you're saying, you need a car to get anywhere. Yeah. Right. It's a more yeah. dead area. So like, there's mm-hmm. I guarantee there's so many people who like because they don't have the access to like walking all the time to go there, they mm-hmm. need to get a ride. But obviously everyone gets rides more to the measure when everyone's going already. Mm-hmm. He'll pick me up at this time. Let's go to Tarawih prayer. Mm-hmm. Cool. But then when Tarawih prayer goes away, right, and there's not like a night prayer, everyone knows. Oh, boom, we're getting to the mm-hmm. night prayer. Who's going? You know what I mean? It's not the same like push or yeah. drag to come to the measure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something that I want to work on too. It's like even though it's like a little bit of a drive for me to get there, it's like still try to make the habit of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But then it's like make it easy for yourself. Or somehow I know there was a guy. He's a mechanic. He works like roughly in this area. He was making dua to like get a new house and like I move in somewhere. But he was gonna get this house. He really loved everything. But the problem was what was with it that it was like 15, 20 minutes away from the nearest masjid. Mm. He was like, no, nah, I really want this house. And he was like, oh, well, like, I'm not going to take it because like, I want to find a house closer to the masjid. MashaAllah. Wallahi, bro, he was making dua. He was telling me a story. He was like, I kept making dua, making dua. A house went for sale. It was like two minutes away from the masjid. Mm. And it was a better house, cheaper. Allah. And it was exactly it was exactly what I would want. And it was literally like, he goes, literally, I could probably walk to the, I could walk to the masjid every day. It just shows that, you know, that shows that, shows that. When you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you something mm-hmm. way better always. But one thing I like about Ramadan, especially in Muslim countries, is having the plethora of reciters of different masajis. You just can go yeah, to, different places, different run, vibes. I'll different go to this mosque, that mosque. So I want to ask you, who is your favorite reciter? Like or, overall? Or in general, the guys that you listen to. Okay, so there's... <laughs> so there's... um. A sheikh that I guess like my mom had a disc mm-hmm. back. You know we had the the, the players. You know yeah. the DVR with the blue ring. Yeah, that yeah, one. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. put the disc in it. Right. Ahmad Al Ajmi, mm. Ahmad Al Ajmi, bro. And it's his recitation of Ar Rahman. Mm. Ar Rahman. Al Quran. Like mm. I can like bro. I can like it's obviously like not recitations Quran, but it's almost it was so melodic the mm. way he was also reciting yeah. it. He's beautiful. And you Masha could Allah. feel like his like energy behind each word that he's saying, like mm-hmm. and like and like for which of your favors like of your lords will you then deny? And mm-hmm. he like the way he would re-keep obviously because like there's so much repetition in that surah, and every time it was a new way he was saying it, but it was just deep yeah, every yeah. time he would say it, and I was just like, whoo, like. And anyway, hey, but then right now, Adosari I know is like been really, Adosari, Adosari, right? He's yeah, been he's really killing. Pop- he's killing. He's really right popular now. right now. He's, he's really popular right now too. And I was reading, his, I saw his uh, recitation recently of Al Lukman, and I saw his recitation of um, Al Qasas, And it was beautiful, really beautiful. Like I love when like a someone like doesn't use like reverb and auto tune on their mm. voice and upload it to YouTube, but it's their real voice with yeah. like, the flow. Like, the flow of the actual Quran rather than like someone who's like trying to like super beautify their voice for something you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I think like as those reciters I really genuinely like hearing mm-hmm. like the passion behind it and inshallah mm-hmm. like on the road to trying to become a Hafiz one day inshallah mm-hmm. like 
I was telling my brother, I was like, what I want to do is find like my favorite reciter of what any surah that I like. Mm. like surah of Fatiha. There's just one reciter, for example, that I really like. Okay, next surah, next surah. And just even if it's like 20 different reciters, 30 different reciters, 40 mm. different reciters, like picking the best reciter of this surah, it's like learning in that tartil, tajweed. Mm. So that I can have like this, like, I guess, mm. personalized sound. Of you know? like your you, favorite. You, 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 like having your own voice. Mm-hmm. Mm. With like all these different voices of different people that I really like how they recite this mm. surah particularly. Because mm-hmm. uh, say, for example, that same sheikh can recite a kaf. And I'm like, eh, mm. I, I heard, it's nice. Obviously, the recitation is nice. But then like another sheikh, the way he recites it is like a little different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like sometimes you kind of find that. I guess that like energy. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, but for I was, me, right now, personally, there's a guy called the uh, Sheikh. His name is uh, Tawfiq Asayr. Tawfiq Asayr. He's a rich but I think he's leaning behind. Let me. F- when I tell you this, Subhanallah, man, this is one one Sheikh that uh, Ara, bro. He when, was. It's like really like. Are you? Do you try to emulate the sound, or do you feel like you already have like your own sound at this point? Of course, I have my own sound, but just listening to him, listening to him when 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 he recites, it's a uh, bro, it's out of this world, man. I, I was I thought you were gonna, when you were asking me too. I thought you were gonna ask me like in this area, because Wallahi, I was telling like, again, I went on like my world tour, like this Ramadan. Yeah, I went yeah. to like every masjid that I basically I could, every masjid to like pray at and every masjid in the area. Yeah. And when I did that, I was thinking like, okay, who was the best reciter? Like when I was thinking, I know in the one mosque it was literally two twin brothers who were like under fifty or fifteen years old, and like I was listening to them, and, like it was nice, you know. But mm-hmm. I'm like, it wasn't hitting the same, you know. They're still like young, they're learning their own sound and everything. One shaykh is nice. Ahmed Zain is nice. Mm-hmm. Ahmed Zain, I think he learned an ICP. Allah alam. Yeah, yeah, I want ICP. Yeah. There's nice. two. There's two guys in the, in the Libyan Imam too. He's nice. There's, oh, t- there's two nice. and stuff. And then I obviously went to other mosques and stuff. But then I was telling, my, I was telling my brother, he's like, we were asking. Him. He's like, oh, which side did you like? I'm like, dude. Adam, bro. Hey, man, chill, chill, chill. This is 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 this I don't know, man. It's, it's Yo, it sadder, is, man. It's it's hella it's when he, when he, when he, when I seen this video, bro. Allah, the Bithal, just sit in my in my room, just close my eyes and just listen, bro. And I'm like, he's his his cadence is very calming oh, too. Man, and he has a Allah. some people have like a, their voices are like either deep or high, but his is like right in the middle, smooth, man. So it's smooth. it doesn't feel like it's and he's not doing too much. I was just some excited that they're nice, but they're doing uh, up and down, up like. But this one, like, you just, you're listening and you can actually focus on the recitation, the beauty of it. It helps you with the meaning of the ayahs. And I'm like, man, subhanAllah. So if there's one person I want to pray behind, inshallah, one day, it's behind him, man. Inshallah. Pray behind him. Inshallah, may Allah put you guys next to each other, toe to toe. I mean, toe to toe, man. I but of course, he's leading those. So I'm going to be on the right side, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the right side, you yeah. be on the left side, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's because there are some reciters, when you pray behind them, bro, you don't feel tired. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, he's leading salah. And the way they read the ayat is they know the meaning and they're reading in a way where you can understand it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But see, I like that. So sometimes I'll hear reciters, like oh, I'm praying behind. I, mm-hmm. Allah, like you said, like, I get tired. Yeah. And like, you know, you're not supposed to get tired. You're supposed to be like, again, yeah. locked in. But like, we're human. We're not going to feel like 100% locked in every mm-hmm. single time you pray. But sometimes when someone's like able to break it down and I can hear what they're saying, mm-hmm. like piece by piece, I'm like, yeah. I love that because then I'm like, Oh yeah, that's the oh, we're in Surah Yusuf right now. Okay. Mm. Oh, we're in this surah right now. Like I can yeah. recall some, where we're yeah, at. Yeah, because some imams they flow the ayah and with their voice they know how to recite the ayahs with 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 the meaning. Mm-hmm. So so even they feel it and you can feel it too. Mm-hmm. So I'll be in salah with the Sheikh I'm listening to him and then and then he, like I'll be playing in the background. I'm listening, I'm like, man, this is like some ayahs that I will never even ponder about. I'll be pondering because he's reciting it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's just it's, inshallah, man. One day I get to pray behind Tafiq Sahib. No, man. definitely inshallah. Met, I mean. but, but where does where does where does he pray at? I think now, if I'm not mistaken, he's in Bahrain. If mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, I could mm-hmm. be wrong though. He was in Jeddah before, and then I think he moved to Bahrain. Allah mm-hmm. Alam or not? But mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's in Bahrain. If I, if if I'm not mistaken, but him, guys like this Abkar, you know, I prayed behind one of my 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 favorite Mashaikh Somali named mm-hmm. Sheikh Abdul Ali Sufi. Mm-hmm. Oh man, smooth, smooth. Him. Um, but one thing I want people to know is reciters on YouTube and live are night and day. Like what? Like from for example, the Haram reciters. When I hear their audios, it's nice, but I'm like, it's sometimes I sometimes like I'm not really feeling the tone or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when I went there live in Mecca, it's way different, bro. When the mics are hitting, I remember one time I was praying on the rooftop in in Haram. This was 2023. Mm-hmm. I was praying on the roof. And the speaker of the mic was like me to you. So the speaker, they had these poles for speakers. And the distance was like me to you. Wait, the speaker? The speaker. <laughs> oh, the speaker. So that's, so it was just blaring. No, it was long. It was long. It, was, it wasn't wide. It was oh, long okay. It had poles and it had long speakers. I see what you mean. Okay. Because I was going to say, if it's like, it's no, going to no. be blaring. So it, 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 was, it was spread out amongst the roof. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for that time, the weather was nice. And the, I think it was Bender Balila. He was reading, he was leading Surat. Sort uh, sort of calf. Did you really sort of calf? Bro, I was praying, and the mic quality was amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, there's there can there's nothing that could be be this experience right now, man. Mm-hmm. Nothing, man. So when you hear them live, is it can't compare to audio. Live is different, man. Because the audio is only picking it up from the speakers that are picking up his audio. Yeah. So it's not like a direct like I'm speaking into the microphone. It was it's like you're listening to this on YouTube from. Someone else's, f- you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like multiple not mediums, same. not the same. So, I would say, so even going back to places like Saudi or like back home to Egypt, there's mosques that have different reciters, so you have different tastes of different guys. Mm-hmm. So, you might have a guy that's a bit slower, a guy that reads faster, he has a more high pitched voice, he has a more low pitched voice. So, you get to kind of like benefit from the different beautiful voices of, of Taraweeh, you know. Mm-hmm. So, that's why praying back home, those kind of countries, or visiting for Ramadan is amazing. Like, I was in Kenya. There's a lot of masajid, a lot of masajid. Mm-hmm. So one day I'll go here, oh, this guy's nice. Then I'll go here, oh, this guy's banging, mashallah. Then I'll go here. And then. So you get to kind of like mm-hmm. enjoy each night, have a different flavor yeah. of reciters, man. So that's one thing I like about having Ramadan in the Muslim country. Mm-hmm. Of course, here the, the, there's not many masajid. Mm-hmm. But back to there's so many options, so you get to do so yeah. much, you know what I'm saying? Now, alhamdulillah, I feel like there's something, definitely something that I would want to like, enjoy in the future. Is like I've never done a Ramadan in a Muslim country I've done Ramadan Outside of America mm. I've never done one In a Muslim country The best experience But I've done Eid I've done Eid the Kabir Like a big, the big mm. Eid I've done it in Egypt Twice now mm. And like It is like Heavy Like you see No but no but, no, but you, you can't compare Eid to Ramadan man. Yeah I, th- Ramadan, I think the same thing Because everyone Everyone is on that Spiritual high Mm-hmm. So everyone's good to you. People are inviting you for thought at their homes. Like, like you, you'll be walking outside and it's almost maghrib. And people, you here's dates, here's water to break your fast with, right? People are giving you advice. Everyone's in the mission reading the Quran, so it's a different. So Shaitan locked up, so like the waswasa of the evil yeah. stuff goes away. So it? everyone is locked in Ramadan time. So mm-hmm. the vibe is immaculate. Everyone's happy. See, now you got me inspired. Now I'm thinking like I've got to get into Ram- like a Ramadan and like I'm telling you, definitely, yeah. definitely. If it wasn't for coming here for for to this mission, mm-hmm. I would definitely love. To do Ramadan in the Muslim country, mm-hmm. definitely, man. There's nothing better than after the after we, everyone's outside, right? Restaurants open. You go mm-hmm. drink your shah. Everyone's it's a very and good like you eat because your second meal because like obviously yeah. the first meal you don't eat so heavy exactly. So you're really actual like bigger meals kind after of tarawih. after tarawih. Yes, yeah, yeah, tarawih, You know what I'm saying? Then Fajr the mosque is a bump. Mosque is full. Mm-hmm. Everyone's there. There's like classes, reminders. You know what I'm saying? So. You know what I'm saying? People are just more generous. Everyone's giving you hugs. Salam alaikum. You're mm-hmm. going to the masjid. People are showing you love. So Ramadan in the Muslim country is a lot better than Ramadan here. So I would say visit Muslim yeah. country. You know what I'm saying? Visit mm-hmm. Muslim country. But there's some areas in America that are, you, you feel like everyone's Muslim. Like in New York, there's a mosque everywhere. Yeah. Every block there's a mosque. Mm-hmm. Even okay. like Michigan, like it's like again, Dearborn, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Like, like. Dearborn, I think, I think, I think, I think you you need a qama to go yeah. to go to go. Yeah. Dearborn, man. It's funny. Um, you need a qama. I heard. I was looking up. I was talking to a, a friend. She was she's Gambian and Mali, and Mali mm-hmm. right? She was telling me like, "Yo, Minnesota is filled with oh, Somalis. Somalis." Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was like, "Somalis yeah, yeah, yeah. are yeah. packed." Yeah, in everywhere. Minnesota. Where we got Minnesota unlocked, brother. <laughs> yeah, a lot. That's our Why area. is that? If I go, a lot. I don't know. <laughs> Why but, 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 but there's, there's hotspots: Minnesota, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, Seattle. 
You know what I'm saying? I uh, saw that too. Washington has yeah, a lot of Somalis yeah, too. Yeah, DMV area, Virginia, there's yeah. a lot of Somalis. So you got Somalis like in East uh, in San Diego, East East Diego, a lot of Somalis. So the Somalis like, first of all, th- there are Somalis everywhere, mm-hmm. but there's like concentrations of Somalis and heavy like dense. But Minnesota, I went there for ten days. I don't think I interacted with anybody that was oh, not Somali. That's that's what I, I looked at the density of like uh, the graph. It was like where are the most Somalis located in America, and Minnesota yeah. was number one. I think so. I think Minnesota has. The most Somali diaspora in the world, like outside of really? Somalia, yeah, yeah, yeah. The most Somalis in one place, I think, is in Minnesota. If that, I'm not mistaken, no, I look like that because if I mean, if this is America, I'm not mistaken, I think it's Minnesota. But why did Minnesota become the Somali hotspot? Allahu alam. That, See, now that is like some alam. research. I got. I'm gonna yeah, get into that. That needs some history checking. Why? Yeah, um, it's like New York. Because New York, when, when I went there, there's no Somalis in New York. Barely any Somalis in New York. Yeah, but it's mostly what's Africans. Yeah, and there's a lot of Arab too. There's a lot of Arab. A lot of Arabs. A lot of Arabs. A lot of Arabs. In New York. But, I'm, but I'm talking about I'm talking about like 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 uh, in terms of like uh, uh, African countries. I, of course, Egyptians are African countries, mm-hmm. but there's, there's a lot of Yemenis. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Yemenis, but there's a lot of West Africans mm-hmm. in New York. In New York, a lot of them, and I, I've never been to a community where there's a lot of West Africans. Mm-hmm. Like in Canada, where, where in my city, they're there, but they're not too many. Like they have their own masajid, they have their own communities, they mm-hmm. have their own neighborhoods. So it was interesting seeing that. I liked that a lot, man. It was, I had the food. That's why, because the guys who took me out to go eat were West African brothers. Mm-hmm. So they took me out to their spot, their little joint. They, it was nice. They had, they had the, they had the, uh, the, little, the areas. Yeah, the areas. So it was nice. It was nice. So West African is nice, but Somalia is Minnesota. But we have the chains, brother. Locked up. <laughs> yeah, we have everything Somalis. I told you, I was there for 10 days. And I did not speak, or not speak, but I didn't deal with like people that are not Somali. Unless I'm, 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 I'm at like a restaurant, like a waiter, a waitress. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like everyone else was Somali. Mosque, Somalis. The malls were Somali. The friends around Somali. I'm saying everything was just Somalis. That's probably nice though, like a Somali community. Like for me, even like with Egyptians, like there's like some Egyptians in this area, you yeah. know, and this here and there. But I've never been in an area outside of Egypt where it's all Egyptians. There has to be one somewhere. Yeah. Um, definitely New York New York has a little Bay everything. Ridge Bay Ridge New York bro Is like <laughs> Bay Ridge, I think I've been there when Bro it's just out of bro It's just out of well, Bro you could literally Walk down the street bro And not speak eat, Only speak Hear Arabic Only being spoken I was shocked in New York When, when I went to Pray at a masjid And the sign Had like an Arab sign yeah, was like, bro. There's a spot. There's, there's a saloon. There's, I remember saloon singing Saudi like barber. I said, I said, like, I said, I said saloon. Where am I? <laughs> yeah, I was there, like saloon. So it was interesting to see about that. There's like, a street, bro, where like there's like four or five like um, like Egyptian like mm-hmm. seafood spots, mm-hmm. bro. Wallahi, it's like it, they're all like it's just Arabic writing, but it's like English writing also like come in and stuff. But when you walk in, all you hear is mm-hmm. Arabic. Mm-hmm. And then you leave, go to the next one. All you hear is Arabic. You, I walked into like a like a it's like a, all like halal stuff, right? It's like a halal Chinese store, right? But this halal Chinese Dude. store where I walk in, everyone's speaking Arabic. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, Chinese, bro. I don't, that's what I'm saying. It was just a street of like, everyone was just speaking Arabic mm. in that whole row, and I was like, I don't know. It was one of those moments where you realize, like, wow, like you're in this area of like a lot of you know, yeah. but here you're not going to see that in this mm. area. Mm. So, so. But I look at it. for the viewers, man, for the viewers, mm-hmm. how did we meet? Ramadan No but how, how was our How did we Like our interaction We met It was pretty funny Cause um I was recording uh, In the back of the Tarawih prayer That you were You're good It was just like the light thing But I was um Recording like the Tarawih prayer Cause like I was doing like the Ramadan vlogs mm-hmm. And showing people What Ramadan is like In the area and stuff And I went You, you came out And we were talking I was like hey like, Nice to meet you My name is Ali mm-hmm. Like who are you from So blah, blah. And I was like, I like what you're saying. I brought the camera back, and you're like, oh, you got the you got the content creator going on over oh, here. Yeah, yeah. And we were laughing about it and stuff, but it was cool because we met in the masjid. Yeah, yeah. You know, too. And it was like nice, like again, when you meet someone, it's like, hey, how are you? Hey, this is what I do. What do you mm-hmm. do? And you kind of go through like the little back and forth histories. We, it's mm-hmm. funny because we had actually talked about food. Remember, we talked about drinks. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about the high C. We were talking about Sprite. We were talking yeah, about yeah, this yeah. and saying like different things. We met other brothers as well. And then now we're sitting down across each other. Out of I was I was telling someone like. How the world Like The way Allah puts people In your life Is, is interesting mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Like the way I met you And I was telling someone Actually as well The friends that you make In the masjid Were always the friends That you have Like for a very long time mm-hmm. like, Every friend that I made In the masjid That I met Growing up in the masjid Or were, I, I, or I always linked them In the masjid mm-hmm. They were always My long lasting friends mm-hmm. But friends that I kind of met Like outside the masjid Like after a while 
I didn't really keep in contact with them. Or just, mm. it just kind of died down in itself. It wasn't really like, like I pushed them away. I naturally moved in itself. But that's interesting how we just met. Because I thought, you know, it's funny. I thought you were a big content creator. Really? Inshallah, really? you will be one day. Yeah. A big content creator. Because like, I already was big. I thought you were huge. Because mm-hmm. I've never seen someone just come put a camera. Like, guys, <laughs> guys, like, like understand this. I'm in the mission. I just see a, a tripod in the back <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming this guy already got he got very followers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You so you had the whole thing set up, the whole like uh, the hand one as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, like this must be big. Mm-hmm. And he told me, no, I'm a new content creator. I said, mashallah, man, nice. Mm-hmm. But inshallah, one day you'll you'll yeah. you'll, you'll get. And big, the funny thing is too, it's like um to do things you never had, you have to do things you've never done. Mm. And then yeah, of course. yeah, and then the thing is too, it's like when you move like f- professional, you're gonna. Be, act professional You're going to treat yourself professionally And then mm. you're going to get The pro- professional results Definitely, definitely Like everything definitely, you're doing You're just going to do it at 100% And for me I've always believed that And Islam teaches that It's like Anything you do Do it 100% do it. So, And then I'm thinking like yeah. It took me a while Because I'm not really like a Again I'm a social person Extroverted person But me too Like in my head I'm like I don't bro, I don't want to bring Like a camera around And have myself being recorded And, mm-hmm. and nor do I want to do Like cringy Like let me put the camera down And walk out of my car And go back in my <laughs> car Like so for, but for me I want to Show what I do like mm. the message, like show what the message looks like to people. Because, mm-hmm. dude, who knows? Some people don't even know what a message looks like. What do Muslims do in the message, bro? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because what do you learn in the, the news? You don't learn like positive things. So yeah. I'm like, how about I actually show people, yo, this is what Muslims do in the masjid You know? And then I started mm-hmm. thinking with that intention, and I was like, you know, what? that's what I'm gonna do. And Alhamdulillah, like once I like got into that mindset, and I was like, you know, I'm not afraid to put this tripod right in the back mm-hmm. of the tarawih prayer, mm-hmm. like record even the eat prayer. Yeah, I'll give the reminder. I'm, I'm looking around. I just see the tanks staring at me. Yo, whose camera is that? You know what I'm saying? I can't like, I was speaking, like it's funny because as I was speaking, it caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. I was speaking, I lost my train of thought. I was like, I look back, I was like, yo, man, like, whose camera? Is that? I'm still speaking though. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, whose camera? In your head, is you're that? thinking like, who's recording yeah, me? Who's recording me? You know what I'm saying. Then I found out. Not only than the Ali Al 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 Kanawi. Yeah, sir. Abu 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 Oli Kanoli. Abu Oli Kanoli. Come on, man. Yeah. So then, it's I guess it's good. And for for me, like something that really inspired me to actually create content was that I started noticing, like when you look at your phone and like you see things like you get suggested, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you say you're on TikTok or Instagram. At this point, the algorithms kind of pick up, like, okay, this person's Muslim. They like Muslim content. Mm-hmm. Cool. But then when you make a new account. Or you're making new anything, mm. you're just gonna get all this crap. It's you, have funny, fil- <laughs> you have to filter out all this like complete yeah, garbage. Yeah. And sometimes the garbage will still come to you because mm. they want to push it because it gets a lot of views and clicks. But then I started thinking, like, wait, if these people have no ghira over themselves and no shame of what they're posting, mm. I'm like, why the heck am I worried about posting positive content? So then I started sure. thinking that way, and I'm like, you know what? And, and for me, because I am in the business of social media and I actually do things that wanting to change something mm. for real and genuine, then I'm like, this is only better for me to try creating positive content because at least then I'll be giving a good light, even mm. if it won't blow up overnight as fast as doing the most unholy or disgusting, like moral mm-hmm. things, you know? So to me, it's like try to focus on just spreading positivity rather than like yeah. the negativity that we do see get spread. So I love that, man. Well, I, when, when I first seen it, I was like, I was like, yeah, Allah, please allow him to, to, to be a good influence. Yeah, because I see your content, man. You're doing really good things, much like. No, nah, thank you, brother. Proud of you, man. No, uh, thank you, and uh, thank you for coming on to the podcast too. Because I know that it's like some people, it's like hard to do it on stuff. But thank you for like being able to like, you know, we go on the part two. Let's talk about some more things. Part two, man, guys. He he told me I want a part two. I said let's do it, and it was a good friend of mine, so I had to show him love. You mm-hmm. know, it was it was it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the month that I'm one, it wouldn't be the same without him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? oh, oh man, you know, saying you know when the comments go, oh, the comments. <laughs> <laughs> now you insert guys insert on here <laughs> at this minute, but yeah, man. Well, I serious. Yeah, Ramadan, without meeting you, it would not be the same experience. There's a lot of brothers that I met here mm-hmm. that like everyone, everyone had a role mm-hmm. in my experience being great. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everyone had a part. Of my, like I was saying the last day you weren't there, but I was saying like everyone gave me salam at the end and showing me love. Like I pre- like mm-hmm. I appreciate the small things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The small things. Of course, gifts like people give me gifts and that's fine. But everyone's giving me salam. How you doing? How's everything? How's your family? Mm. Conversation, building that bond. That's the things that I remember the most, you know? Yeah. So you played a big role in my state, man. A big, no, of big, course. And I'm happy role. that I had an impact, you know? A, a big impact, man. No, thank uh, you. Me, bro. Wallahi, impact not only inviting me to the podcast, inviting me to your house for iftar. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sh- showing me love. Great conversations, you know Always. what I'm saying. A lot of a lot of the behind the scene podcasts that we did. Yeah, you know what I'm saying off off my conversations that we had. Mm-hmm. So generally, it was good. 
experience was great, great. Even though even though Easton's quiet, you you made a lot for me. You know, thank what I'm you, saying? brother. You, you, made, you made a lot for me. You made a lot for me. And then man. We're, are you gonna be like back in Canada? Or are you going back? To yeah, Canada? I'm traveling, man. Where, wherever the world takes me, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Inshallah. Where, where is like the next spot you're thinking of trying to like dabble dabble into? Just a visit in general. Like either be there for a little bit or not. I don't know, man. I don't know. I I love traveling, but it depends on me. I have, to, I have Twitter fingers, so I just might see a flight. Mm-hmm. I actually seen a flight today actually mm-hmm. from philly to to jiddef like 500 dollars yeah round trip really yeah you should, i think she's gone man <laughs> show up <laughs> 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 yeah bro well i like this gun is very cheap but i don't know man i don't know where i'm gonna go next but uh i don't know where i'll go but somewhere so somewhere definitely yeah. maybe back to canada maybe go back to kenya see if Cause like your family lives in canada right my now. yeah my family's in canada but mm-hmm. my parents moved to kenya Oh, okay. So I see you. So I go visit back and forth. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It's funny, but I'll, like it's, speaking about parents, I had a conversation with someone to, to, before we kind of end this. But it was it was telling people who you love, I love you, mm-hmm. right? Like saying saying I love you mm-hmm. to people who you love, and is it weird? Is it weird if you tell someone that, that I love you and how would they respond from mm-hmm. you saying I love you? Like randomly out of nowhere, just like, hey, I love you. No, like, like your friend, like, yo, bro, like, I love you for real. Like, I actually love Me you. Me personally, with like my friends, like, alhamdulillah, like, I, I say I love you today. How about your parents? You see a lot of your parents? Yeah, all the time. I know, I know, cause yeah. one time me and friend had a test where we, we we literally called someone. He called someone. And said, you know what it is, said, though? When you start thinking about it, though, like, there's other ways you say I love you. Like, no, I'm, I'm talking about the phrase. The phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm saying, like, you. there's also other ways people show love. Like, for example, like, fathers will show love sometimes to their kids or something. It's like, They'll cut up like my dad will do this thing where he'll cut up grapes. Yeah, like you know, cut them off and he'll eat yeah. some, but then he'll bring it upstairs to us randomly. Mm. I'm going to bed, guys. All right, it's it's about Good night. Love yeah, you. Love yeah. you. You know, but that's like that little <laughs> thing. Mean more like that little, that little thing of him giving you the grapes, bro. That's like the. You see, I think, I think, I think. I watched the video when, 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 when you're with your dad, and then you say like, "Yeah, I like, I like watermelons." And, and then he brings, <laughs> he brings you the whole fifty uh, watermelons, yeah, forty watermelons, like two of them from the store. I got this for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's so true because to them, like, yeah. oh, my kid likes this. I'm gonna yeah, make him happy. Bye, yeah. But but that's what they do. They want to make us happy. And, yeah, and man, even if in their parents, own ways, man. in their own ways, right? Shout out to all the fathers. Shout out to all the mothers. Shout out to the Al Kanawis. I mean, they take care of him and your dad. May Allah bless him. Your mom. May Allah bless her. F- saying for the food. Mm-hmm. I'm saying the food was banging. The food he gave him for iftar. Yeah, man. So that was this. You made the experience great, man. Nah, alhamdulillah, bro. Thank Inshallah. you. Traveling, tra- I'm leaving tomorrow, so. It's gonna be sad to leave, but you yeah. know it is what it is. Inshallah, we could we could meet somewhere else too. Inshallah, we can meet somewhere, in Saudi. Man. Yeah, we oh, could hopefully, meet man. Egypt. Maybe we can meet in Canada. Because again, mm. for me, like I want to go back to because I know I visited Toronto one time. Mm-hmm. But like I was like I when I was in Toronto, I was like I actually really like the city. Mm. Like it was it was vibes. I like how you pronounce it ter- Toronto, not Toronto. Isn't it Toronto? It's ter- it's, it's written Toronto, mm-hmm. but we pronounce it as Toronto. 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 Yeah, that's what I said, right? You said, you, you, you said Toronto, like Toronto, you, like you pronounced the last T. Yeah, but we call it Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's like I say the full word because, yeah, like, yeah, to yeah. me, I'm not Canadian, so I'm gonna yeah, say the full word. You're, 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 you're speaking with full uh, tajweed, much Allah. Tajweed, you know what I'm saying? In your English, <laughs> full, full, full English full, tajweed. Full English tajweed, much Allah, pronouncing all your letters. Mm, but yeah, man. All right, Il, thank you again for. Have another podcast, and inshallah, we'll get to talk soon. Inshallah, I ain't, guys, don't forget, it's still cold right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, the next guest that comes on here, <laughs> <laughs> bring a jacket. You were telling me upstairs, right? Yeah. Saying what? Tell him what you said, please. I was telling him that it was like warm outside because you know it, was like it's, it is warm outside. It's warm outside, so like I don't want to have the heat on too much and be yeah. sweating down here, right? I'm in a t- I'm in a t shirt, right? Yeah. But I was like, it's gonna be nice when you go downstairs. It's gonna be calm. I see it on your face. There's times, there's times where you're doing this on your face. <laughs> Even me, I'm cold. I was like, last time I was way. I, last time I was genuinely cold. Yeah, this time I was cold. This time I was like, fine. But you're cold. But I see it on your face, but no, it's not. Cold. I see it on your. I see it in your eyes. You're cold. Whoa, my eyes. I see your eyes are cold. <laughs> I see that because because you're like you're you're because cause you know cold cold makes it a bit a bit uh a bit drowsy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're like oh, you're 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 a bit cold. <laughs> it's funny the opposite happens for me. Oh, for real? Like when it's warm, I keep I keep wrong then, but I, I can notice you're cold. I'm not cold though. F- f- now feel my arm. You're yeah, cold. You're warm. You're that's what I'm saying. You're cold. <laughs> I'm not cold, right? You're cold. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm freezing, right? I'm warm, yeah, warm. See, that's, I told you. You want my cold, but it's I mean, You know what it is? 
I just so much love to give. So it's like I get warm. I, I, I need the love. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lacking right now. I'm lacking right now. <laughs> I need the love, man. <laughs> may I mean, inshallah, may Adam receive all the love. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, guys. But thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of the Oli Canoli Show. It was awesome to have Adam here for a part two. And it's actually the first guest I've had for a part two. And if you guys yeah. want to be in the same seat where he's sitting, in the description below will be the link. Apply. I would love to talk to you soon. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode. See you next time. And bring a jacket, inshallah. Bye. Inshallah. <laughs>